It's the Mixed Martial Arts Hour with... No! Mixed Martial Arts Hour is back in your life. On this Monday, June 13th, 2022. Hello again, everyone. I hope you're doing well on this post-pay-per-view Monday. Nothing quite like a post-pay-per-view Monday. It's always bigger. You get one of these, you know, every month or so, 13 or so times a year. And man, man, do we have a lot to discuss on this post-pay-per-view Monday, June 13th, 2022. What a card. UFC 275 was maybe didn't have the biggest amount of hype and buzz going into it. But as the great Dana White likes to say, you can never, you can absolutely never judge a fight card going into it. You can't. You got to judge it after the fact. And if we are judging it after the fact, might be the best pay-per-view of the year so far, at least main card. All five fights on the main card were tremendous. The top three were super intriguing going in and a hell of a lot more intriguing going out. Incredible results. Zhang Wei Li looked better than she's ever looked before, and that includes when she won the belt in a matter of seconds. She looked incredible against Yuani on Jacek. It was a rematch of one of the best fights that we've ever seen, period. The greatest women's fight of all time, period. Two plus years in the making, and Zhang Wei Li looked fantastic, and she ended up beating Yuani on Jacek and doing so in incredible fashion. Spinning back fist, knockout of the year contender. Are you kidding me? Now, don't, you know, I saw Meatball Molly's tweet. I don't know if it's better than the spinning back elbow. Perhaps the stake's a little higher in this one. Regardless, who the hell cares? Tremendous win. And unfortunately, afterwards, we had the sad scene with Yuani on Jacek, and we'll talk about that more throughout the day. She has nothing to be ashamed of. She has nothing really to prove anymore. I know she wanted another crack at the belt. One of the greatest female fighters of all time. One of the greatest champions in UFC history. I don't know if the straw weight title is what it is today without her. She put that division, that belt on the map. She was incredible to uh, to cover, always very gracious, and in her prime as champion, just an absolute beast. Remember the Jessica Penne fight? Remember the Carlos Barza fight? Valerie Letourneau? Just an absolute beast in her prime. Uh, and, and a sad scene afterwards. She was emotional. She put the gloves in the uh, the center of the cage on the mat. And now it looks like we're getting Zhang Wei Li versus Carlos Barza, which is a very interesting fight. And I don't think anyone was predicting at some point in 2022 that Zhang Wei Li would be fighting for the belt again. But here we are. That as a result of the somewhat surprising uh, Rose Namunas loss to Carlos Barza recently. So that was the third biggest fight on the card, if you will. Then we had Valentina Shevchenko against Tyler Santos. Pretty big favorite. Not as big as usual. And you were wondering, all right, what do the odds makers see in Tyler Santos? Of course, she has looked good in her last few fights, did stumble in her UFC debut. And wouldn't you know it, it sort of felt a little bit like Jones Gustafson way back in the day where we gave no respect to the challenger. And then slowly but surely, you're like, is something happening here? Is something going on here? Like, what are we actually witnessing? And I got to be honest, I got to watch it again. But upon viewing it live, didn't have a chance to watch it again yesterday. I'm going to be honest. My wife has been away for five days. The fact that I'm I'm actually like here and alive and talking to you all and somewhat coherent is a victory in its own self because, you know, I've been alone with the kids, the dog, all that stuff. But I, of course, watched the fights, stayed up like 4 a.m., woke up at 7 a.m. You don't care about any of this. But the point is, I didn't get a chance to do my usual uh, second viewing on a Sunday night. Here's the thing. I thought Tyler was up 3 nothing going into the fourth. And then we have the clash of heads. Accidental. I don't think it's fair to knock Valentina. I do think that was a massive, massive turn of events. I do think it hurt Tyler Santos. I reported yesterday after speaking to her manager, Tiago, um, that she broke her orbital, right side of her face, has to have surgery now back home in Brazil. This is a really big deal. And interestingly enough, they told me, you know what? We're not going to bang the drum too hard on the immediate rematch. Of course, she has to get better. She has to have the surgery. That's going to take weeks, if not months. We like where she's at and we think she could get even better. So why not take our time and we'll meet her again? Interesting, sensible perspective. But that was the closest that we've ever seen Valentina closest to defeat possible at 125 by far. And, of course, the last time we saw her lose was against Amanda Nunes in a fight that a lot of people thought she won back in Edmonton many moons ago. It was just a fascinating fight. And I think a lot closer than a lot of people, including me, including Valentina, thought it would, uh, 
you know, it would be that close. Valentina retains, she wins. Valiant effort, tremendous effort by Tyler Santos. Then in the main event, Glover Teixeira, Yuri Prochaska, I mean, maybe the best, I think the second best light heavyweight title fight of all time, all time, behind Jones Gustafson, UFC 165. The ebbs and flows were incredible. And you could probably sit here and make a strong case that it's the best ever because of the ebbs and flows, because of the constant action. It was a lot more like Hendo Shogun in that regard, number one. And then because of the finish, Glover Teixeira, who I thought was up three to one going into the fifth, and a lot of people disagreed, ends up getting subbed with 28 seconds remaining. Yuri Prochaska is your new UFC light heavyweight champion, the pride of Czech Republic. And an hour or so ago, uh, I shared this, a bunch of people did as well. There's a parade that just concluded in the Czech Republic. It's, uh, I think there's six hours ahead of us. So it's seven o'clock over there now. In his honor, according to his manager, Tim Simpson, who was there, over 7,000 people attended, took him around town, uh, had this huge like sort of culmination on the stage and everything. This is a big, big deal. A really big deal. Of course, his first title defense probably will be at the UFC Apex, but this is a big freaking deal. And one would think you'd want to go to Prague. You'd want to really build, you know, this is how you build markets. This is how you build stars. And to see someone become a UFC champion for the first time and to see what it means to the country first time a Czech native becomes a champion, it's really cool. You are reminded, you know, it's not. It's nothing like what we have here. If an American wins the champ, like if Justin Gaethje would have won the belt, first one that comes to mind because he just fought for the belt, American, there ain't no parade with 7,000 people happening in Denver. It's just not the way... It goes down because there's just so much more, right? There's NBA, there's NFL. So when someone from the Czech Republic, from Brazil, from Ireland, from, you know, these places that don't have a ton of international superstars, it just comes across so much bigger and so much more exciting. More on that main event in a moment, more on the lineup in a second as well. I got a lot to discuss, a lot to say on this post pay-per-view Monday. I'm fired. It was a great card. I like the June pay-per-view. I've always liked the June pay-per-view. It has always flown under the radar because the July one gets all the attention. But the June pay-per-view historically has always been a fun one. Of course, uh, you know, we had last year, we had Leon and, and Nate and Izzy was on the card way back. You, it was a UFC uh, 72, I think it was. You know, uh, the Vancouver card, 115, um, 131. Uh, of course, the great 199, Michael Bisping. There's been a bunch over the years in June that don't get the shine and then end up delivering. Uh, as always, we are presented by our good friends. I'm fired up. I'm sorry. I'm fired up on this Monday. A lot to discuss, a lot going on. We are presented by our good friends over at DraftKings Sportsbook. They are the official sports betting partner of the UFC. Please download the DraftKings Sportsbook app today and use code DMAR for a special offer when you sign up. Again, that's code DMAR only at DraftKings Sportsbook. You may notice we've uh, switched up the camera angle here a little bit. Trying to switch things up, you know, a nice little uh, coat of paint, new coat. Sometimes you got to repaint things. Uh, so shout out to the good people at DraftKings Sportsbook. Please support them because they support us and use the code when you sign up because that's how they know we sent you. Back into the show. Uh, GC is still on his uh, European vacation, although shout out to GC. Woke up and he has the receipts. You know, he's there. He's tweeting. He woke up at, I think, 4 a.m. I think he's in Italy now. Uh, and he was tweeting along. And so he has sent us his actual results. We'll go through them. Big hitters as well. So if you're a big hitter and you're waiting for a shout out, he has sent me some big hitters. So we'll run through that. Um, and we'll see how he did. And of course, uh, this this will uh, placate the, uh, oh, where's the slips, bro? Bro, where are your slips? Oh, where'd you get these odds from? I mean, it's just... What a what what a what a collection of jabrones on Twitter these days. What has happened to our dear Twitter? Remember when Twitter was cool, and uh, Dana White would be like, "Hey, come meet me at a pond in Arizona and Phoenix. I'm going to be there giving you tickets." Like that's when Twitter was cool. Now it's like, let me wake up and just be mad at the world and be uh, crazy. That's at around uh, three thirty. At three o'clock, my friends, we're going to be joined by Leon Rocky Edwards. You may have heard. Over the weekend, they officially announced Leon Edwards, Kamar Usman 2. A lot of people forget they fought once back in 2015 in uh, in Orlando, the week after the great 
UFC 194 card, Conor McGregor versus Jose Aldo. That was a credible card. That was a really good card. That was a Fox card, RDA, Cowboy, all that stuff, a title fight on Fox. Uh, they fought on the prelims. Well, they're running it back with the stakes much higher. And of course, they're running it back in the main event for the welterweight title. And naturally, uh, the fight between Kamara Usman and Leon Edwards is happening in the very exotic, the very relevant Salt Lake City, Utah, for some strange reason. But it's going down finally August 20th, so beggars can't be choosers, and that will be UFC 278. We'll see what else they add. Are they going to add Nathan Diaz finally? Are they going to put us, uh, you know, they're going to put a uh, Nate Diaz versus Dustin Poirier fight on that card? That would be nice. We'll see, but what we know for sure is we're getting Leon Edwards versus Kamar Usman or Usman versus Edwards too, and we're going to talk to Leon Edwards in his first interview since the fight was announced at 3 Eastern. I remember someone, I don't know if, I know like New York Rick is on Twitter and stuff, he works in social. Someone reported that that was the plan, and then there were other people who like went on like, these little like petty media tours saying that that wasn't the plan, that that was false. You Do you remember who that was or what that was, New York Rick? I don't know if you're... Do you know what I'm talking about? He might be getting coffee or something. I don't know. So it was like, there, was, there was a report and then people went around. I, I feel like that was you, no? Right, and then people went around, right? It's, it's funny you'd forget that, but I do think it was you, actually. But well, then there was... Did yeah, the people was, go around the subsequent... I saw something about, yeah, yeah. That's, not, that's not true, and then... Some guy. Some guy. And then it was true. Mm, Turns out it was true. Wow. I mean, even the blind squirrel, right? As they say, even the blind squirrel. I mean, well, what would Ariel Hawani know? Can I get a shirt from Breaking Tea of the Elbow Scratch? The Elbow Scratch is the best. Uh, in any event, Leon Edwards. 2.30, we're going to be joined by Anthony Smith. Where does he factor into all of this? July 30th, he meets uh, Magomed Ankalaev. Going into this fight on Saturday, Magomed Ankalaev and Anthony Smith had been sort of proclaimed you know, the guys who will be fighting in the number one contender fight. But I wonder if Yuri winning changes everything. So that's at 2.30. At 2 o'clock, guess what? Dominic Reyes is back. We haven't seen Dominic Reyes since May of last year when he lost to Yuri Prochaska. Crazy finish, right? The spinning back elbow. Hasn't fought. Has been very much under the radar. Really flying. I mean, I think he's done like one interview since. Uh, with uh, with James Lynch, the great James Lynch. And I'm wondering what's up with him now with the 205 division in focus. Of course, he knows a thing or two about, uh, you know, the the new champ, Yuri Prochaska. So I thought it'd be fun to catch up with him. So that'll be at two o'clock. Dominic Grace will be joining us. And in around seven or so minutes, we're going to be joined by Misha Tate, who was brought up by Valentina Shevchenko in some of her post-fight media as a fight that she has her eye on Misha Tate is fighting Lauren Murphy next month in her flyweight debut. She has looked fantastic in her photos. Everything she's posting online, it looks like the cut is going very well. She's never fought at 25 in the UFC, but here we go. Misha Tate at 25. If she wins, does she get a title shot? We'll get her thoughts on that and also her thoughts on uh, Ioane and Jacek when she joins us in a bit. I did want to talk a little bit more about the uh, 205 division. By the way, Frank, ever since we went to uh, Eric, have you noticed that crackling or is that just me? That's you. There's like a there's like a steady like sort of like uh, a hum. Like, no, just like a, like a gnat sound. I'll look into it. Ever since we went to him, I don't know if it's his microphone or something. Oh, now it's gone. What happened? I turned off his microphone. Oh, fantastic! Uh, thank you, thank you. I appreciate it. So, what a fight! You know, very happy for Yuri, obviously. It's a great moment. It's a great moment for Europe. It's a great moment for the Czech Republic. It was an amazing fight. If you haven't seen it yet, golly, do yourself a favor and uh, go watch it back and forth. And there were moments where you thought Glover was going to sub him. There are moments when you thought he was going to finish him. I know some people, you know, the conspiracy theorists want to talk about the tapping. Didn't look like taps to me. I probably would advise against doing something like that, but it looked more like he was saying like, good job or just trying to, mess with him, play around. And then, it, so they go into fourth. He has a nasty gash over his left eye. Fourth round, I thought, after the fourth, it was 3-1 Glover. And I tweeted this, and a lot of people were like, no, that's crazy, 2-2, fine. 
I'm just so happy that there was a conclusive finish. So we don't have to sit here and talk about as, as much as you guys think I like talking about the judging. I don't want to talk about it. I wish all the fights ended conclusively. So we never have to talk about this, even though I think open scoring is the greatest thing. And one of the best ideas to come to the sport uh, in many years. Fifth round is going his way. Within like a couple minutes, he has mount. He had mount. As of, I think, like 105 left in the round, Glover was was rolling. And then all of a sudden, there was the reversal. And even with that, you're like, all right, he's not going to... I didn't think... I thought at this point, there's a minute left. Glover's going to win 4-1, to one, or at worst, 3-2. And then what happens? Yuri Prochaska is able to muster some kind of strength, some kind of energy, and submit Glover to share for the first time in his illustrious career, he has submitted, and it wasn't even a traditional submission, if you will. Like the hooks weren't locked in. You know, he he got him via rear naked, but I didn't think that that was like I was shocked. The angle was a little bit off. Didn't see even the broadcasters didn't seem like the commentary team didn't seem like they thought that it was going to happen. And then with 28 seconds remaining in the fifth round, 28 seconds away from his successful title defense, Yuri submits Glover Teixeira. Shocking result. And I know that Glover hasn't had the belt for a very long time. And I know that, you know, he's getting up there. And I kind of feel like you have three very good options now at 205. 205 has all of a sudden become really, really interesting. The first option is you go with Jan Bohovic. Uh, and I'm not ranking these, but, you know, Jan thinks, you know, former champ thinks that he got it against Rakic. I don't know if he has the momentum. He saw that moment. By the way, another example as to why it's always good when someone who you want to fight or the, the belt in your weight class is being defended, be there, sit in the front row, because you never know what's going to happen. You never know the magic that is going to ensue. And guess what? He's sitting there. They, you know, exchange words. Yuri blows a kiss. It gets people talking. And a fight between two Eastern Europeans who are quite popular, I think would do massive business over there in Poland, in the Czech Republic, or anywhere around there. So that's one option which I think people would be okay with. I think it's a very good option. I think it's a lucrative option. Option two is the winner of Anthony Smith versus Magomed on Kalaev. You want a fresh guy in there. If Magomed wins, especially convincingly, decisively finishes Anthony Smith, I think people could get behind that. If it's just a ho-hum decision, I think that one gets thrown out the window. There is something to be said, though, for, hey, you know, you did say that this was the number one contender fight beforehand, and now you're going to take it away, you know, Based on the result, fine, I get it, but maybe it's best not to say anything. Who knows? If Anthony wins, there's a great story to be told there. He fought for the belt against John Jones, didn't go his way. He works all the way back in the twilight of his career. You know, Anthony versus Yuri is probably a really, really fun fight. Or the one which right now I kind of feel like is the leader, Glover versus Yuri, because the fight was so good. You run it back right away. You talk about the mistakes that Glover made. You talk about how close he was to finishing. You talk about this being really like the the last or second to last, you know, fight of his great career. And you just have the first fight to be like, look, this is what they did the first time. Can't wait to see what they do the second time. I feel like what's hurting that one is the idea that if Glover wins, he might retire or be close to retirement because nothing pisses Dana White off more than a champion, you know, just vacating the title. Uh, they don't like that. I think they feel like it sort of diminishes the value of the belt. Now all of a sudden you have a vacant title and the lineage gets kind of cut off. So I'm really curious. I could sit here and make a very strong case for all three. All three are very valid. All three would be very fun. I wonder what direction they're leaning towards. And maybe they just wait to see what happens with the Anthony Smith fight. They don't have to make a decision today, obviously. And then finally decide. But there's there's a lot of pros and just a couple cons for each. That fight, though, was so great, so entertaining. I mean, again, the the ebbs and flows, the ups and downs. First, you're like, oh, my God, Glover's almost done. Then it's Yuri's almost done. And then Glover's almost done. And then Yuri's almost done. And then you think Glover's got it in the bag. And then all of a sudden, there's a reversal and the submission. Just incredible stuff. Not only one of the best light heavyweight title fights that we've ever seen, Right now, I would think it's in pole position for fight of the year. Uh, nothing has really come close. Like, I think Hamzat versus Gilbert was, uh, 
you know, the leader up until this point, this to me was way better than that. And of course it was a longer fight, but the stakes were bigger. Everything was bigger. Um, so I just loved everything about it. I'm, I'm curious. I, I spoke a little bit to Glover, uh, you know, obviously asked him to, to be on if he wanted to little beat up, said he would be happy to come on in the, uh, the coming weeks shows year. He's doing his, uh, his, uh, parade and all that, but Yuri will be on Wednesday's show, just so you know. And uh, I think the UFC could have something special in him. Now, does he get hit a lot? Uh, is he a little, you know, reckless and erratic at times? Sure. But the guy is on a 13-fight winning streak. You know, in the UFC, he has now defeated Volkan Ozdemir, Dominic Grace, and Glover Teixeira, three of the very best light heavyweights on the planet. And he's got the look. He's got the style. You know, he's got the the vibe, the martial, even what he wore afterwards. The guy is fun. The guy is just a lot of fun. Like, he is never in a boring fight. His wins, dating back to his last loss in December of 2015 to Muhammad Awal, KO, decision, TKO, TKO, KO, TKO, 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 KO, 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 submission. That's a guy you can get behind. Uh, of his 29 victories, 25 via KO or TKO, one via decision, and three via submission. Of his losses, just three, two via KO or TKO, one via sub, one draw. So this is a guy that you know is going to deliver, good or bad, and it's mostly good. Tremendous stuff. So later in the show, we're going to talk to uh, Anthony Smith about his upcoming fight and you know, see if he can make the case for him being next. We'll also talk to Dominic Reyes, who knows Yuri very, very well. Leon Edwards coming up as well. Check in with New York Rick, check in with GC. But I want to spend some time on the flyweight division and even talk a little Joanna. No one better to do that with right now with uh, the legend, the female who will be fighting at 125 very soon. In less than a month. I hardly recognize you, Misha. I mean, you're so skinny these days. It's unbelievable. How much do you weigh? It's crazy. You know, the fight's in a month, right? You don't have to lose all the weight beforehand. Oh my gosh. I think less than three weeks now. I don't know if that qualifies as a month. We're, okay. We're fine. Moving right along. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we're good. I, I weigh a lot less than before. <laughs> Did, did this happen like a little easier than, I mean, I say easy, I'm sure it's not like you snap your fingers, but is the weight coming off, is the process easier than you expected it to be? You know, it's been a really long grind because I was supposed to fight May 14th and then I got on this little show called Celebrity Big Brother. And then that was kind of like a training camp in itself, just in, a, in, a, in its own right, like the mental grind and the emotional fortitude that it took to get through that show. And then, right. We kind of come right back into this. So it just feels like it's been a really long camp, but I think everything's gone uh, progressively how it's supposed to. So I suppose, yeah, with that being said, it's been, it hasn't been difficult. And uh, I'm going to ask you obviously about celebrity. You freaking won the whole thing. Unbelievably. So, and you know what, if I could just say, I feel like not enough was made of this. I feel like it, like, it, like this kind of flew under the radar in the MMA world. You won the whole damn show. And on, I, I feel like we should have been behind you a little bit more. We should have like, and, and I hate to say, I oh, feel like the UFC you. should have been behind it a little bit more. Like I only kind of found out that you were on it towards the end. Yeah, that, that, well, that's interesting. I mean, I wouldn't know because I was on the show and they completely cut you off from the outside world. So um, it's not a recommendable experience to be on that show. However, winning it definitely made it worth it. And totally different demographics, right? I think that demographic is like right. women, you know, and then the, the, the other UFC's demographic is male. So I guess maybe the guys just didn't really care. They're like either fight or we don't, we don't care. Right. And, <laughs> and how many weeks away? Like how, how many weeks are you cut off from the world? Well, it was one, with the quarantine, it would be five weeks, man, five weeks. You couldn't talk to your kids. Out. Not at all. It was heartbreaking. That was probably the worst part for me was just not knowing what's going on with my kids. I mean, there's such a big part of every day for me to, to not see them or not know how they are. And they were a little under the weather when I went on the show too. So I really want to make sure that they were healthy and well, but no, that's, that was part of it. It was definitely a test. It was definitely a test. Difficult. Your poor husband alone with the kids for five weeks. My wife has been away five days and I feel like collapsing. How did he do it? 
<laughs> well, my mom did come in from out of town and she helped a little bit for sure. But no, he was just Superman. I don't, I don't even know. I think I have so much more love and respect for him after that, because I know how difficult it can be. Um, I'm definitely, you know, the, the parent that likes to be in control of everything too. Like I, I make their nap schedules. I do the potty training. Like I have to do those things. And so when I, when I was gone for a month, I was just like, Oh my God, I just don't know how this is going to go. I was like stressed out about it. You know, like how, what if, I don't know. It's just the mom thing, I guess. Yes. Yes. Well, uh, thankfully it all went well. And by the way, what do you win when you win celebrity? Like, do you get a check? Would you, well, like what, what is that stake? Yeah. Uh, quarter million. It was $250,000. That's not bad. So no small. Yeah. No, no small feat for sure. Um, I mean, for a month, like it's not a bad payday. It yeah. worked out. If I didn't win it though, it would not have been worth it. Right. No way. Second place got 50 grand. I forget that. They're just, I'm just telling you right now, you guys, is, it was way harder than anybody could have, have imagined. Just being locked in a house with strangers. And then it's such a diabolical game if you will it's like you're you're you have to create these teams and then you know so you can keep the votes on your side but then you're forced to cannibalize your own team and teammates as the game goes on because once you've eliminated the other half of the house now it becomes a competition between everybody who's been riding with you so it's just a you know very strange concept to try to wrap your mind around i didn't like that are you a part of like the Big Brother ecosystem now? Like, will you on, be on different Big Brother shows or is it one and done for you? Uh, I don't think I'll be on any other shows other than maybe doing like little like guest appearances. Sometimes they have them host different games, you know, they'll come back. Right. And, but other than that, no, I, I think that was a one and done for me. Okay. All right. Seems like uh, that's enough, you know. Maybe Dancing minutes. with the Stars or something though. I mean, Let's I go. would be down for that. It's have to be isolated from the world you know yeah i heard that that's a celebrity big brother or big brother is is the um toughest show to do because of that isolation all the other shows you know i have the challenges but you don't have to lock you don't have to leave your life sure for a month you know you can still go back to everything once you've done your episode or your practices or whatever it is by the way, last thing on this how do you even make it on the show like do you do you, do you try out does someone submit you how does that happen no, um, maybe some people do, but in my case, they reached out to the UFC. So I don't know if you knew this, but Chuck Liddell was on season one of Celebrity Big Brother. And I think through that correlation and them kind of probably wanting to fit, you know, an athlete role, you know, needed a female, um, maybe that connection was already made. And so they reached out to the UFC, re- UFC reached out to me. I was like, this sounds insane, but sign me up. Okay. And, you know me. I'm a risk taker. I love it. I love it. Uh, well, again, congratulations. Now, as far as 125 is concerned, why did you decide to do this? Well, you know what? Um, it was Mick Maynard who kicked off the idea for me. And it just really wasn't ever something I had considered. It had always been 135. And then I started to sit back and say, you know what? Why? What if 125? What, what could I do there with women who are 10 pounds smaller Um, you know, pound for pound, I think if there's any evolution of the sport that's gotten more challenging in the time that I was gone, it would be the size of the women, just women, just, they seem a lot bigger at 135 right now. Ketlin just seemed so big and strong at 135. And it's not that I felt like I couldn't compete there. It's just, could I compete better at 125? And that's really what it's about. i just want to do my best. You know, I'm not here for a long time. I'm here for a good time. So I want to make that fast track to the title. Um, That's what I'm looking to do and make waves in the division. And when they offered me Lauren Murphy, I thought um, she's ranked number two. She just fought for a title. So, you know, it's just a good, it's a really good fight for me. And I felt like this was the universe conspiring to tell me that 125 is where um, where it's at and what I need to do at 125 um, remains to be seen, but um, I'm excited to make the change. I mean, or you got to think about this too. When I first started in MMA, there really wasn't a 125. It was 135 in Strike Force, and it was 135 that got us into the UFC. So it just was never really an option. But even back then, I remember when I fought in the Strike Force tournament to get my um, title shot. I was I was walking into fight week at 138. 
I walked into the Mario Renault fight week at 139. Wow. I walked into Ketlin Varis fight week 141 because I was trying to put on the size. So size was never an issue for me in the beginning of my career because so many of these women didn't really know how to wrestle. I mean, it was, we were all very one dimensional. It was either a striker or a grappler, but not that many wrestlers. I was a wrestler. So me knowing how to use my weight and manipulate the weight did serve me well in that beginning part, but now everybody is very well rounded. Everybody can do all of it. So now I just feel like maybe going down to 125 is going to, um, help my strength and my skill set compute at a better advantage for me. I've never had height and reach advantages at 135 anyways. I've never been very big for the weight class. So I think dropping down to 125 was just, it was obvious. And I just never really realized it until Mick was like, I think we should do that. And I was like, I think you're crazy. And then I was like, Uh oh, actually maybe, all right, let's talk to my coaches and see if we can do it. And yeah, they said, absolutely. Are you worried about fight week? Like, do you think it's going to be tough to actually hit 126 in this case because it's a non-title fight? Well, of course, I think, like, it's going to be a more difficult cut than what I was doing. However, I have had some hellacious cuts over my career who that have motivated me to never have to do that again. So we are on point. I'm already within striking range of 126. I don't believe that I will have any problems to make it, but it's going to be a little bit more of a grind. I mean, the last two fights was almost like what cut I didn't really have any weight cut. So we'll have a weight cut this time for sure. But I believe it will be to my advantage. It won't be too much. Um, and it won't be too little. We'll be a little, you know, Goldilocks uh, theory going into this fight. We're going to get it just right. Have you been told that if you win this fight, you are getting a title shot? I have not been told that, but I feel like the assumption is there because especially this fight with Valentina, you know, Talia, wow. Um, she was quite amazing, but, um, who else is really left in the top five? You know, if I come in and beat the number two ranked woman in the division, I feel like that definitely puts me in the conversation. Right. Right. And going to enter the chat. Yes. Uh, and Valentina, I don't know if you saw, uh, referenced you afterwards. So oh, yes. let us get into that fight. First of all, who do you think won that fight? Tyler Santos or Valentina Shevchenko? I honestly, on my first impression, thought that Talia Santos won the first three rounds. Yeah. That's how I thought. Mm-hmm. That's how I thought. And then going back and watching it, I mean, I could see an argument where Valentina, could, depending what you favor, could have won the fight but in my mind i still feel like talia santos won it especially because i think that the um the visual of the eye which i believe primarily came from the headbutt was calculated in the in the the judges minds however it really shouldn't have been because it was a you know a, a foul essentially so i think talia took it what did she do well? What surprised you about what Tyler did in the first three rounds in particular that gave her so much success against someone who's undefeated at 125 and has often looked somewhat invincible at 125? Yeah, she wrestled. This is what I've been saying the whole time. We already know what happens when people strike with Valentina. It's not a, not a great day for those people. But even what you saw with... Um, with with juliana pena if we can even dial it back a minute if you guys remember yeah she she did get on barge she made a mistake and you cannot you cannot underestimate what valentina can do on the ground you know that would be you know remiss by anybody to say like she's not dangerous there she certainly is but you know um she got taken down by juliana and she now second time she got taken down by somebody who can wrestle and the transitions were on point talia believed in herself and she didn't second guess her routes and she out scrambled uh, Valentina on the ground. And these are things that I've been saying, I believe that I can do. I am capable of doing these things. I'm capable of making this fight much more interesting than, than people who are too timid to, to force their way in and grab a hold of Valentina Shushenko. She's absolutely dangerous on her feet, but what happens, you know, what happens? And when I saw Damien, uh, excuse me, um, uh, Maya, Jennifer, Jennifer, Jennifer. Thank you. Yeah. I was saying Je- Jennifer, Jennifer, Maya, um, you know, get on top position, which uh, was actually an error of Valentina's 
you know, she was trying to get a takedown and she slipped to end up on bottom. It happened also in the fight with Santos where she went for a takedown and ended up on bottom. Um, I just remember seeing uh, Jennifer Maya hold her down around. And at that time, I never th- saw myself fighting 125, so it didn't really matter to me. But now I watched that fight and I was absolutely salivating. Huh. Then I see Talia Santos go out there and do what I, that's like, ah, it was almost frustrating to see because for me, selfishly, I wanted to be the first one to say, like, I knew this could be done. But now people kind of see it. I, and I do understand. I believe that Valentina went in with a little bit of an injury. Um, so sure, could that have played a little bit of factor into her footwork and, you know, her, her ability to defend on the ground? Yeah, absolutely. But, I mean, I'm licking my chops. So I, would, I was just going to ask you, I'd imagine Saturday night, Sunday, you wake up. And you're like, well, I mean, the confidence now, let me get by Lauren and correct me if I'm wrong. Do you feel like there's a blueprint out there to beat Valentina Shevchenko that it has just been shown by Tyler Santos and a little bit by Jennifer Maya around two years ago? Well, the worst part is I already knew this. Now the rest of the world knows it. Uh, I already believe this. <laughs> I didn't want Valentina to look any less, in, you know, indestructible. I didn't want her to... I wanted her to stay where everybody thought that she was so unbeatable because I already knew I could do that. I could do it, you know? So for me, it's kind of like, ah, it's been shown. Now people, you know, are going to believe in me more to be able to do it. I didn't want that. I wanted to be the massive underdog. I wanted everybody to count me on. I wanted nobody to think that Misha Tate, five years retired, two kids, what, you know, coming back two and one uh, in the UFC uh, would be able to take out Valentina Shoshenko. But now I think people can see a little bit of what I've been saying might hold some water. Um, I don't know if that benefits me, but either way, the game plan has not changed. We have Lauren Murphy, July 2nd. She is no um, easy task. You know, she's primarily a grappler, much different fight than Valentina Shoshenko. I would say her strengths are according to my strengths. So it'll be a battle of, of wills and skill set in there. So, of course, I've got to get past that one, but she is ranked number two. Long-term goal is to get to Valentina Shushenko. I hope to make that one giant step closer after July 2nd. By the way, I, I can see that uh, my good friend and fellow Canadian Renee Paquette is uh, rubbing off on you because that was a great wrestling promo right there. That you, I mean, you just you just cut it. That's the promo. Five years away, the mother <laughs> too. And uh, I know you have to get to the show momentarily, uh, thrown down with uh, Renee and Misha on Sirius XM Fight Nation. Yes. That's at uh, 2 you. Eastern. Uh, but that was great. See, I could see the wrestling. The wrestling is coming out there. And I mean pro wrestling, not the amateur wrestling. Um, is there any worry, because it was so close, because of the, the clash of heads and all that, that they'll run it back and now you'll have to wait longer if all goes well for you on July 2nd? Do you, do you fear that they might do that? I don't think so, because sadly enough, it's, I think it's just that Ty Santos is not a big enough name. And that's unfortunate to say. I mean, I think her, her, I do not mean that disrespectfully whatsoever. Cause I'm a huge fan of hers, especially after that performance. I thought she was fantastic. However, I just don't think, think the UFC is going to do an immediate, well, how often do they do immediate rematches for contenders? Yeah. Almost never. Yeah. You know what I mean? Almost never. Now, if, if Tally had won, absolutely. I think the rematch would be happening. But she beat, I think it's largely going to be up to Valentina and she's already mentioned my name. She already said, you know, she's going to be, I know she's going to be keeping an eye on that fight. And I know that she wants to fight me. It's no secret. Um, I feel like everybody wants to fight me. You know, I'm the uncrowned queen. I've got the target on my back, almost as big as any champion. Everybody wants to take out the cupcake, but um, no, we're going to get it done July 2nd. And then I think Valentina and I will be next to Lock Lawrence. That's my plan. Were you surprised that she mentioned you after the fight? I mean, usually Valentina kind of keeps it down the middle. Were you surprised surprised that she specifically said your name? Yeah. Yeah, I really was. I was surprised that because normally she just, you know, she's very kosher with everything she says. And I didn't take it disrespectfully, but right. I didn't expect her to kind of um, acknowledge that um, this would be a number one contender eliminator fight. Well, that, that's great, though, because if the champion's calling for it, I think it's even that much more likely to happen. So you fight her. How do you think it plays out? Like, how, how do you see the fight in your mind? I'm sure you thought of it, right? Do you think it's like a yeah. a decision like that? Do you think, what, what do you think? I think I have the finishing ability on the ground inside five rounds to, to get Valentina out of there. I really want to show the, the, um, the evolution 
in this this camp i i just feel like i've continued to evolve the mind body connection is still continuing to evolve and i think maybe i'm discovering my 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 true weight class maybe from the very beginning so um with that with valentina you know similar obviously i, I know i want to get it to the ground at some point but i think i could get the fight done i think i could finish it and not to get ahead of myself but i'm just curious you pull that off the way you are envisioning it, beating Valentina, the great Valentina Shevchenko, maybe even finishing her, what do you think would be a bigger deal Like when, when your career is all said and done, legacy stuff, right? The first thing they mentioned, the win over Holly at 196 or that? For me, it would be that because Valentina Shevchenko is such a dominant champion. I mean, it is so difficult to do. I can even say to myself, I mean, I didn't have a successful defense. I can't, I, I just have so much respect for all these women and athletes who are able to successfully defend continually again and again, because, you know, going in there with the kind of injury that she had, I mean, this happens in fights and you're always fighting the next best person, the next hungriest person who has been taking out all the competition. So it's not easy to do. It's no easy task. So I have a tremendous amount of respect for her, but legacy wise, I mean, that's, that's going to take the cake for me. Mm. Uh, just two more things, and then I'll let you go. Uh, just curious about Joanna. Speaking of legacy, she uh, she retires yeah. on Saturday. Incredible performance by Zhang Wei Li. She is an absolute beast. Uh, but just you know, you you were there with Joanna. You guys were fellow champs at one point. Yeah. What do you think Joanna's legacy is? And and by the way, do you think are you surprised that she retired? I was surprised that she retired. I didn't expect it. When I saw her taking her gloves off inside the octagon, I was like, wait a minute, is she going to retire? Because I thought she looked phenomenal. I mean, I thought both women looked like elevated versions of themselves. I still think that Joanna has a lot to offer should she choose to continue fighting. However, um, as I've come to realize later in my life, and I think what she's come to realize, and I had an interview with her just a couple weeks ago on our show, uh, you know, throw down with Renee. Um, and she looked so happy and fulfilled. And I recognized that in her, she was in a great place. She was going in a great mindset. I just feel like, you know, she's ready to move on to the next chapter. I've been in that position before, except now she's 35 years old. I do think this is probably, um, a smart decision because it's what she wants and what makes her happy. And life is too short to be miserable. We got to go out there and find what lights our souls on fire. You know, we get one go around in this, right? Unless you believe in reincarnation, but we don't remember our other lives anyway. So basically we get one go around in this. <laughs> and I think um, she's doing it right. You know, she wants to start a family. She wants to be a businesswoman. She, yeah. She's phenomenal. She's just an amazing, amazing woman and a phenomenal fighter. And I think she'll she'll always be recognized as one of the best to to ever compete in the UFC. You think Zhang beats Carlos Barza? I do. Mm. I think that's a hell of a fight for any woman. I think Zhang Weili, the way that she's so explosive and she's so deadly with her hands, um, you know, Carlos sometimes tends to get uh, to start shooting a little further away when she really gets cracked. Um, and so I just think that if she does that against Sean, she's got to be really prepared to lock horns with Sean Whaley, you know, and, and really technically she's probably the better wrestler. I feel, I feel like, um, if you look at on paper, could she out wrestle her? If it was just a straight wrestling match, probably Carla would win, but in MMA, when you take the other things into factor, the damage, the amount of power that that woman generates for 115 pounds it's incredible it's really unlike any other female in the division so i think she all around is gonna be a little bit too much for carla last one juliana amanda two who do you have in that oh juliana wow for sure that definitive yeah, yeah for sure for sure i you know i knew she could do it the first time and people were kind of like oh you're crazy you're just biased but um, now the aura of invincibility has been cracked. It's been damaged a little bit. I, and I think that not only everybody else knows it, Amanda knows it because Julie's just not afraid of Amanda. Like the, all the other women were kind of like deer in headlights and getting, you know, getting scared. I didn't know what I was getting myself into with Amanda. I didn't know she could hit like that. You know what I mean? It's not that I was like scared of her. She, she caught me off guard. She legitimately showed up and brought something that I didn't expect. And she caught me and, props to her but julie's like i don't 
I like, I don't give a F like I am going to go out there and I'm going to punch this woman in the face and I'm going to make it an ugly fight. She's going to know she was in one regardless. And, um, I, I think now it almost seems like maybe Amanda's like making, I don't say making excuses, but it kind of comes across that way when she's like, Oh, I've got to leave this gym now. I've got to start all these other things. Like, I mean, that's a team that, that changed her. Like that's when she joined ATT, she went from the Kat Zingano fight into Amanda, the lioness Nunes. So I don't know, but I will say I'm very confident that Julie can do this a second time. And you know, she's, she's a savage. She's a beast. She's one of my favorite training partners of all time because she has no quit in her and she's incredibly skilled and more so than skilled. She's just got this incredible will. Like she just, she, she, if there's a will, there's a way. Absolutely. I think Julie will get it done. Misha, you're the best. Pleasure as always. Uh, I'll let you go do your own show. It starts at uh, 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific on Sirius XM, Fight Nation. How about me? I plug a show that is going on at the same time as my show. That's the kind of guy that I am, Misha. I, I'm that kind of nice guy. I love it. I love it. Thank you so much. And could I give a quick shout out sure. to my my new website and online store? I'm actually wearing this shirt right now. You know, a little shameless plug. But I, I've always wanted to start my own small business, and I'm really excited that um, I've done it. I've built a great team. I've delegated a lot of this. So we do have shirts and apparel, rash guards, reusable water bottles, because I hate single-use plastic. Don't do it. Don't mm-hmm. drink out of it. Don't you dare, Ariel. I won't. Use a reusable water bottle. Yeah, it's terrible. I have, look, I have, yeah. I have, this is my daughter's okay. water bottle. I, see. I was going to say, I, yes. I figured as much. Yes, yes, we yes, share yes. water bottles too. So. <laughs> but um, it's mishatate.net. So if you guys want to check it out, we have a, my flyweight debut, a limited shirt coming out for just this fight. So yeah, appreciate the support, you guys. Okay, so check it out, MishaTate.net, right? That's it. All right, all the best. Good luck with the cut. Good luck July 2nd. I'm sure we'll be talking to you around then, but I uh, want to wish you the best, and thanks for always giving us some time. Absolutely. Thanks, right. you. Take care. There she is, the great Misha Tate, the future Hall of Famer, the pioneer, the trailblazer, returning to action on July 2nd uh, to fight Lauren Murphy in her flyweight debut but really, obviously, that's uh, in a little less than a month. As she reminded me, wanted to get her thoughts on what happened on Saturday with her weight class, Valentina Shevchenko, Tyler Santos. What a great fight. And also, of course, the Ioannia and Jacek um, retirement, the win by Zhang Wei Li. She's picking Zhang. I feel like a lot of people, I don't know if the odds are out, but I feel like a lot of people will pick Zhang over Carlos Barza. Uh, a few minutes before we get to Dominic Reyes, I want to ask uh, New York Rick about that. I've weighed in. I thought Santos was up 3 nothing going into the fourth. What do you think, Rick? Were you watching it? Did you watch the fights on Saturday? You know, I mean, this, this again, we, we, we talk just, about this always, every week. Yeah, it's, it's, no, it's, of course. You were MMA fighting, uh, social, Twitter, Instagram. Uh, what a fight. Our team. Shout out. No, I know. I'm, I'm saying you. Yes, yes, yes. Of course. Shout out, shout out. Um, I'm watching Tyler Santos and it reminded yeah. me a lot of Jones Gustafson because, and then we end up getting another fight that's kind of like Jones Gustafson in that it was a 205 fight in the main event. But I was like, is this really happening? Like, is this finally, finally happening? And I, I know that we saw it a little bit with Jennifer Maya, but I feel like the Jennifer Maya was like one round and we, and because she's so invincible, we make such a big deal about that one round, but this wasn't one round. This was arguably three rounds. How did you have it going into the fourth? What did you think? Yeah, I had Tyler up. Yeah. So that means she should have won the fight. Now, I will ask. Um, John Jones is a thing for me. Just any yeah. mention of him makes me think okay. a lot. I, I think he's the GOAT, and there's all kinds of stuff. I, I'm, I'm, I think a lot about John Jones. No, of course. Uh, you didn't think this maybe dur- during Reyes? Like, to me, I feel like the Reyes fight was the one where I was finally like, is John Jones about to lose? Gustafson, I, 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 he had a great performance, but if you watch that back, I kind of feel like it was Jones. Oh, no. I think this is revisionist history. I remember, do you remember the buildup to Jones Gustafson was like, oh God, the only thing they yeah. had to sell the us length. on Gustafson was the length, yeah. the height and all that. And then I remember talking to Jones before you the fight. I was like, who's your guy? Who's going to be your biggest rival? And he was talking about Rashad. There was a little DC. And then Gus comes and you remember he starts taking him down. And then remember the spinning back fist was in the fourth? The elbow. Like, yeah, the elbow. Oh, well, the elbow. The, yeah, changed the everything. Thing. So... By the time we got to Reyes, we had already seen the Tiago Santos Look, fight. Like we had vulnerable. already seen yeah. some sort of, you know, even Santos cracks you know, in had, the arm. had some moments. Yeah, um, 
again. No, that that to me was sh- at that point. This was like prime John. This is yeah. killing Rampage, but killing Machida. Yeah. And and I didn't mean to take this in this no, direction, but again, this is like a no, thing no, for yeah. me. I think Shevchenko's looked vulnerable before too. Like I just don't How? think she's the that... one round against Jennifer Maya. Yeah, but also the level of competition matters, right? Like in in and one round against Jennifer Meyer is still looking vulnerable. Like and and against Andrage, there's moments she's looked vulnerable. Again, you know, these are fights she's winning, but like I don't think this is just me. I don't think Valentina is Uh-oh. invulnerable. I really don't. She's the best female fighter in your opinion. She number one pound for pound. No. She's not. Who is? Chris Cyborg. Wow. This is a great. See, this is why we like having you around. Yeah, I mean, Chris Cyborg. You and I had with the hottest takes. Um, <laughs> is that even that hot a take? Well, what about Amanda Nunes? She beat yeah, Cyborg. I know, but now she's lost since, right, to Juliana Pena. Yeah. Head to head matchups matter. A win over somebody matters, obviously. And and right. uh, Nunes has a win over Cyborg. But then if you do that, you get down the path of like, now is Juliana Pena the the greatest sure. fem- like I don't I don't play that game. Resumes looking at them in totality, I think it's Cyborg. Because Cyborg really did do. it longer. Cyborg's done it longer. Does this is crazy. Has done it blowing more my mind. A lot of people I mean, is she Val- not okay, so let's assume Valentina's number one. Is Cyborg not like number two? I have it Valentina, Amanda. Honestly, I have it right now. Valentina, um, off the top of my head, Valentina, Amanda, Juliana. You know what? You could even put Juliana over Amanda, to be honest, because she beat her. Uh, but This is wild to me. We're f- talking about the best female fighters on the planet right now? Yeah, she just beat Amanda Nunes. And then Cyborg is... Da- Who's Cyborg beating lately? Oh, man. Arlene, I mean, like, these Bro. aren't... I get it. Who's Who's Valentina been beating in her... In her well, first of all, a lot of people thought she beat Amanda, right? In the second fight. Yeah. The one in Edmonton, the five round fight. Well, I mean, if we're including her bantamweight run, then well, that's why she's relevant because she's lost no, but a bunch. Th- no, but isn't that the uh isn't that the whole purpose of this exercise? Like I thought you were f- saying who's the best. Yeah, yeah. Best right now. But because of her Cyborg, success in my opinion. Maybe I mean hell, could be you, Kayla Harrison, to be honest. I'd need to uh, see it. But, listen. but how do you how do you you won't get any arguments out of me there? But how are you supposed to put Cyborg over Nunes? Because again, head to head matters. That night, that one fight, that one night matters, but it's not the be all end all, in my opinion. Okay. We Either way, a, we went down. To, we sorry, can have a I fascinating debate about it. this. I don't agree with you on it, but it's fine. Pound for pound is is a funky one. Although in, in women's MMA, it's actually a little bit easier because a lot of them have done 35, 45, 25. Regardless, do you run it back? So since you thought, no. Tyler, you don't. You know, I'm no. usually not in favor with the contender getting an immediate rematch if they lost. But because of that, because of the head it's, clash. Well, who are you asking me? Are you asking me as me, New York Rick, do I want to see that fight again? Or no, you if you're the, the UFC. UFC? Yeah, yeah, oh, no. You don't run that back. To, to Misha Tate's point, she doesn't have the name value. She was the challenger. Uh, it's it's you move on. It's tough you that Misha Tate gets it done against Laura Murphy, and you book that as soon as you can. Okay, do you do... Biggest name that she can fight by far, other than 35. It actually makes the Misha Tate fight more interesting. If Misha looks amazing at 25, yeah, she called it, right? Everyone would be like... Oh, if she does the same thing, like the buildup will be. It's, it's it's right there. This is this will be the most notable, not the not the most tough, not the most tech, not the not the toughest opponent she's going to face. But this will be the most notable fight that Valentina Shevchenko will be in at one twenty five. You're okay with Misha getting a title shot after one win at twenty five? Yeah, based on legacy, name, all that. Again, stuff. we're it's this is specific to the flyweight division, right? This is specific. No, of course, to Valentina yeah, yeah. Shevchenko and this division. Yeah, I don't think I don't think that that's... Well, Yuri got a title shot on two wins, so it's not that big of a yeah. difference. Um, okay, so then let me ask you this: Do I now do do I think Tyler Santos deserves, deserves another crack at it because of that performance? Yes, hundred percent. That was that was impressive, and I think she should. Do I think she will? Ultimately, probably not. It's a lot easier to move on from the from the challenger than the champion. I tell you what: slowly but surely, business getting a little more interesting at twenty five. Manon Fioro fighting September 3rd against Caitlin Chikagian. Going to be a tough one for her. Caitlin's just so tough. She's very much like John Fitch, you know, back in the day where she's not going to win the belt, but she's going to beat everyone else. Yeah. Alexa Grasso returning. She's looked good at 25. But I, I mean, agree with you on that. Here's the thing. Remember last time she was on, Valentina, she talked about 35. Yeah. Now, of course, the fight hadn't played out yet. Do you now pause those plans? If Misha wins, 
Do you pause those plans regardless of what yes. happens with Julian and Amanda? What's what's the rush up to 35? That'll be there. Take yeah. if you get this tape fight yeah. going in your lap now, take advantage of it and run. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Honestly, you can probably okay, like the way you sell it. Valentina moving up to 35 to fight Juliana if that's the fight. Or Amanda. Well, no, here's the thing. Valentina Misha is, I think, a bigger fight than Valentina Juliana, even though it's Valentina moving up to 35. I wonder, though, if Valentina Misha is a bigger fight than Valentina Amanda 3 if Amanda wins and it's the trilogy fight. You know what I mean? I, I, so you think the second belt is not going to elevate that over the Tate fight? Because Tate's such a big name. It's Man, just one big brother. The, you know, Valentina getting a chance to hold two belts, that to me moves it up. Tate's pretty mainstream. Oh, th listen, we we just both said that this is the fight to make. Yeah. No doubt. I, that second belt for Valentina would would move it up in my mind. I think I think that would be a huge fight. I wonder if she gets the rub from Big Brother. Like, is there a trickle-down effect there? <laughs> Come on, from Big Brother? No. Oh God! Are we doing this? This is, it, is this is the Tommy what? Fury stuff all over. She, I don't know. Is is it? I've never. You're the are challenge the, guy. Are the, are the Dancing with the Stars fans coming out for Paige Van Zant's fight? I think initially didn't she initially get a bit of a rub from it? Oh no, man! It also, she didn't like win. That. She didn't win. Social media, TV. That's not. It doesn't translate. People don't buy pay per views because they were on Big Brother. Isn't I'm Big Brother like I'm a sorry. really really big deal? It's a huge show. So is Love Island. So mm, I'm, I'm slagging off Tommy Fury. So is Lo Love Island. Not the same. They're huge. Uh, I don't know about that. Those Meanwhile, are, those Jake Paul has just booked Madison Square Garden. I mean, <laughs> those are that, both that small really, venue for those are both a TBD really big opponent. Shows. It, there's no. There's. Will Will maybe Misha Tate have a spark of recognition to them when they hear about it in in their entertainment trade or whatever they're following? Yeah, sure. Will it lead to any significant difference in terms of the fight game? Zero percent. Nothing. Okay. Not not a one. Uh, we're about to focus on the 205 division now with the upcoming two guests, but I want to ask you, because I laid out the three options. There's no other options. There's... What? There's more? Who? I mean, if John Jones oh, just John decided Jones. one day... I think he's done. Hey, it's 205 time. I think... Jones I would, versus I would, Yuri I would, would be fun. Jones versus Yuri is something we watch right now. Yuri, Glover 2. Uh, Yuri, Smith, Ankalaev, winner. Yep. Or uh, Yuri versus Jan. Nice little scene there afterwards. Which direction... Are you going if you're the UFC? I think you run it back. So that one you run back. Again, this is the champion losing. Right? Yeah, yeah. No, no, Different. I know. I, I, just, I just want to know because I think you make a case for running both back, neither back, you know, one or the other, like you're saying To me, here. and I felt this way about if Glover had won, I felt like Smith and Uncle Iev was off the table. I felt like the Jan fight was there. Let's just do that. It's easy. This one, I think, opens the option. If Anthony Smith or, or Uncle I have come out and absolutely like starch the other and put on a, a show and, and have a performance that can't be denied, I think that puts them in a good position against Yuri. I still think because of how this one played out, people calling this the fight of the year, and off the top of my head, I can't remember one that I was this gripped by. Maybe like Hamza Gilbert. That's yeah, but it. this was better. This this was everything. Um and the champion loses, I don't see a reason not to run this one back. If Anthony Smith or Uncle I have make a statement that can't be denied, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. I don't think Jan made that statement. I thought it was a solid win over over Rakic. But it but was a little bit... It, it, there's there's some controversy. Right, yeah. Uh, not controversy, but you understand what I'm saying. Um, it wasn't a definitive statement. Rakic got hurt. It happens. Yeah. Um, he shouldn't be penalized. He shouldn't be dinged, but... That that storyline felt specific to Glover. That that fight felt like Glover and Jan, they've got their thing going, let's do it. If Smith or Uncle I have make a statement, I could see I could see that. But for me, right now, without having seen that fight, the rematch makes all the sense in the world. Why not? It's such an interesting puzzle it's, to figure out. I would rank that over Jan for sure. I would rank but the that thing over is Jan like for sure. if they book it in Eastern Europe, that's a huge deal. Of course. I mean that's so the, so Jan has that going for him. Former champion has that going for him. Um, like I said, Smith, if he does something great, if Uncle Live does something great, and they've already said that was the number one contender fight, they have that going for him. I wonder, Glover has the first fight going for him, beloved, but I wonder if, like I said earlier, him being on the verge of retirement hurts him or helps him. Yeah, they don't maybe want to put him in that position. Wins and then he walks off. I don't know. I wonder. 
I mean, what a fight it was, though. It was just so great. It's just such an easy fight to sell, right? Hey, this was the best fight of the year. Let's do it again. I mean, it's it has um, it has uh, Moreno and and Figueredo written all over it. It was like this was so good that we cannot not do this again. How, I mean, do it in Prague. Imagine they do it in Prague. You saw that scene, and that's the other thing. Like, yes, I get that Yuri and and Jan would be huge, right? No doubt. In your somewhere in Eastern Europe, it would be massive, right? Well, you're not doing bad with with Glover and and Yuri's rematch wherever you take that either. No. You're, you're doing pretty good, believe me. That you one think it sells out the well. Apex? <laughs> Stop. <laughs> <laughs> but th- that's the thing. That's the thing that judges like. If 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 Yuri was a boxer after yep. that win, his next fight is happening somewhere sure. in Eastern Europe. Specifically, Prague is the biggest. They've been to Prague before. Yeah, where he's from, uh, no big stadium or arena. Here it's gonna happen like in 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 uh, sorry Shaheen Phoenix you know like it's gonna be you know Yuri Usman and Edwards in Salt Lake City. Oh, Salt Lake City. Uh, oh listen, I'm God. sure Salt Lake City's nice, but yeah, I mean, I mean you put, you put that in London, you put that. Yes. Yeah. Um. These none of these are bad options. Truly, none yeah. of these are bad. Two options. five, interesting. For me, the biggest barrier for for somebody like Anthony Smith was that lost to Glover is hard to shake. Right. That that one that right. was hard. Now, him versus Yeri, I'm in. Let me see that. I'm good with it. So there's no bad options here. And Uncle Live, look, he, the streak he's on, the pr- last performance wasn't was in a barn burner, but the streak he's on, I'm okay with that too. I'm okay with that too. There's right. there's no bad options for the champ. Uh, we'll talk to you in a bit. For now, though, let us focus uh, really on the 205 division and talk to a man who knows a thing or two about John Jones, knows a thing or two about uh, being a number one contender, knows Yuri as well. We haven't talked to Dominic Reyes in well over a year. And even when I told people it was going to be like, wow, Dominic Reyes, where have you been, old friend? Without further ado, let us say hello to the great Dominic Reyes. Is he, there he is. He lives. Dominic. I'm here. Where have you been? How are you, sir? I'm good, man. I've been great, actually. Uh, just minding my business, grinding, and watching the UFC from the sidelines. Okay, well, so great to see you, honestly, and great to talk to you. Thank you for coming on. Have a ton of questions for you. And appreciate. By the way, what is in back of you over there? Is that a what is that? Uh, this? Yeah, yeah, that's my sauna. That's awesome. Look at you. Yeah. Um, all right, so so life seems to be good. You're smiling. Why have you? Been, we haven't seen you since May of last year, and of course, you need to take some time off after a finish like that. But why have you been uh, so under the radar? Why have you kept such a low profile? Um, I had to do some, uh, some soul searching on my own. I had to figure out my own shit out before I could really be in the mix and talking to you guys. And I don't know the answers that I would have given you weren't like true. So now, um, I went home, I got my shit together, got back to my roots and, uh, I feel good. I feel good about my life. I feel good about uh, my future and I'm excited about, uh, what's next. When you say like having to get your your stuff together and all that, w- was that as a result of the loss, or were there other things going on that were affecting you? Uh, it was a little bit of both. Um, the loss was the result of not doing things 100 percent correct. Um, obviously, it, the fight was a fight. You know, he he beat me that, and I was a great. It was a great fight. You know, I, it was great. Um, but I had to really go home and, and sit out for a minute and get my shit together. Uh, and, and if you don't want to elaborate, I'm totally okay with that. But could you tell us like what was going wrong in your life at the time? Um, yeah, I, just a lot of things. I, I can't, I can't really explain it. Um, okay. just my decision-making wasn't the best at the time. Let's put it that way. When you say go back to your roots, what do you mean by that? I'm back in California. I'm training at Cobra Kai again. I'm training with Joe Stevenson. I'm training um, over here again. Okay. And you yeah. had left. When did you leave? When did you stop training there? Um, I stopped training here right before the Jan fight. Okay. <laughs> and why did yeah. you leave? Um, just family stuff, trying to do things, trying to make things happen, trying to be... Just doing too much, man. I was uh, I left to go train with my brother um, in Victorville at a different gym, and uh, I was trying to bring my family together and 
not uh, what you want to do when you have a title fight going on, mm-hmm. changing up your camp and and really trying to get everything. Uh, I don't know, every other aspect of my life I was trying to get uh, in order as well, oh. uh, besides just fighting. When you went back to Joe, uh, were you welcome back with open arms? Oh, of course. Yeah. Nice. Absolutely. Yeah. Joe's awesome, man. I uh, really enjoy spending time with Joe. and It's fun training with Joe. He keeps the room, keeps it light and then we have a good time. Yeah, yeah. Legend, legend of the game. Joe daddy Stevenson, um, from back in the day, of course. Um, so did you take like after the Yuri fight, was there any part of you that was done? Did you, did you consider not fighting anymore? No, no, no. never, never, never. Not one time. Okay. I never uh, considered not fighting ever. It was just, I got to take some time and, and get my, my skills correct again. I got to get my mind right. I got to, you know, stop messing around in the streets and get my shit together. Um, yeah, I never considered not fighting. I mean, I did take time off, but I mean, look, Jerry barely fought right now. I mean, a year later, yeah, he's barely fighting as well. I mean, and he didn't, I mean, he did get knocked out, but he didn't stay out. Right. <laughs> I did. So, uh, I took a little more time. I'm taking a little more time. I'm, I'm looking to come back around October. So, okay. We'll get yeah. to that in a moment, but how much time, like, did you just stay away from the gym? Did you need, oh, a, yeah. how long? Yeah, I, I didn't do anything until uh, October when I went to Vegas. Uh, I went and tried out extreme couture. Uh, I did a little bit of light sparring with Sean Strickland. It might've been his lightest sparring ever. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> that's what he was like. He's like, this might be the lightest i've ever sparred i'm like bro thanks i appreciate it you know like i'm not ready to be sparring like that you know i'm barely coming off this this crazy fight i haven't really been training and uh i went back there i was the heaviest i'd ever been i was like 245 and i was pretty out of shape and they they were cool man extreme couture good people over there helped me uh get my mind back on the game and and from then on i've just been training and enjoying it really i think that some of that sparring emerged right the video emerged um yeah right before sean's last fight actually okay were you okay with that it is what it is man i mean i'm not i'm not one to really i mean that's kind of a reason why i don't go to big gyms and stuff so my stuff doesn't really get out there yeah but uh it is what it is i mean it's not like i was in any kind of form where you could get anything off of the film so (laughs) right it was just me just moving around with sean is that is that a betray of trust no, not at all. Not okay. at all. No. Okay. Uh, not good. <laughs> did you did you consider staying there in Vegas? Um, and well, and I, I'm actually con- I'm actually considering doing my camps there um, okay. from now on. Um, but I'm, I mean, I'm still still figuring it out fully. But yeah, I'm going to be spending some time there for sure going forward. Uh, did you? It's only a two hour drive from my house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm assuming like, are you watching MMA? Are you, uh, keeping up? Oh yeah. With, okay. So, uh, I'm, oh, yeah. I'm assuming you watched this weekend, uh, with a, with mm-hmm. a careful eye. What did you think of the, uh, the title fight, the main event between Glover Teixeira and Yuri Prochaska? It was, it was amazing. It had everything. It had all the drama we all, we all want. It had the, you know, the underdog, you know, nearly pulling it off. And then the favorite, you know, pulling off a creative wild submission at the end. I mean, it had everything. It was it was all heart. It was all grit. It was those are the kind of fights I love watching. You know, especially in my division, it's freaking awesome to see uh, these guys fighting for the light heavyweight division, bringing it back. You know, it feels great. It feels great to be a part of it. You know, uh, Jerry, he won. That's really great for him. Um, yeah, it was a great fight. <laughs> I don't really, I ever really got. He he didn't uh, he didn't have his greatest performance, but who's to say what your greatest performance is, right? I mean, every fight is their own fight. You can't be like, right. oh, uh, he sucked in that fight, so I'm going to take advantage of him in this fight. Like, that's not how it works. Like, every every fight is its own fight, its own its own little universe. And it, it doesn't it, – it's funny when people start saying, oh, well, he didn't look good in that fight, so that I could do this maybe. Like, dude, that's not how it works. Right. Once you step in the ring and once you start fighting someone, then that's how the fight's going to go. It, it's – it's hard to say that you could get anything off of a fight like this. It was good to watch him fight the full distance. That was really cool. Um, but yeah, I'm just happy it was such a good fight. You yeah, know, it, was and it wasn't a, a crappy fight. 
Uh, just curious. I don't know if you watched the fights yeah. like this, but who who did you think was winning going into the fifth? Glover was clearly winning going into the fifth. Yeah, yeah for Three sure. One. He was thirty seconds. He was thirty seconds away. Whoa! <laughs> I don't know why. Whoa! Did we? I think we lost your video there. I got it. Okay. All right, we got it back. Yeah, he, he was he was twenty eight. He he got subbed at twenty eight, and was uh, we've never seen mm -hmm. him get subbed before. And mm -hmm. Yuri didn't even have the hooks in or anything. Like I I was I was shocked. What were you thinking? Were you shocked as well? Oh, uh, as soon as he got it, I was like, it's over. Really? I've sub I've submitted a guy like that before in a in a fight. There's, there's certain positions you're in, and there's no way out. Like if if Glover would have fought the hands immediately, he would have been fine. But he didn't. He was tired, man. His his mind wasn't. It looked like uh, when Jerry got on top, it looked like it was like, all right, just last, you know, last minute or last thirty seconds, and, and you're gonna win, kind of thing. Right. And he was kind of hanging his head. And when I saw him hanging his head, I was like, oh, if Jerry snatches that neck, he's gonna be able to submit him from there. He has a cage to push him up against, so there's not really anywhere to go, and he's just gonna squeeze. We're, you know, at two hundred five. You get we get a hold of somebody's neck. You literally only have seven seconds. Yeah. Whether it hooks are in or not, you better get them off in seven seven to eleven seconds before you pass out. But at light heavyweight, it's closer to seven. So it's like whether you have hooks or not, you got seven seconds, and that's kind of what it what happened there. Wow. Um, consider like you know Yuri. You've been in there with him. What makes him so tough? Obviously, he, like to us watching at home, he's a little unconventional. His striking is unconventional. Everything about him is a little unconventional. But what Absolutely. about what about him is so impressive in your opinion? Um, so the thing about Jerry is just his his heart is is crazy, man. He he uh like I said, I, I actually knocked him out in our fight, but he came back and kept fighting, you know. It was it was one of those situations where his heart is is almost stronger than his body, you know? Hmm. And uh and I think his unconventional style is such such man. The way he moves, it seems awkward and weird but everything he's doing has a purpose so like he'll he'll step in like a weird angle but then he'll punch off the angle so like you don't it's like you almost never get to rest because you don't know it's not rest but you, you never like it's always the pressure is always on you because you never know when he's going to strike because he is he could take a step back and then lunge forward with his now lead hand you know and that's what he does and that's what he was doing to glover and kept catching him off guard um, in the second round, he landed a bunch of strikes like that that started combination flurries, and it was all because it's it's his unconventional movement and the way he he'll like dip, 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 and then like throw an uppercut, dip, and then throw a two, dip, step back, throw a two, or a, or a jab that's now a two, and it, it's constant uh, stance switches and it, it's just uh, weird angles all the time. He's always coming from angles. He's it's hard to deal with for sure. Um, in our fight. In the beginning, I I had a really hard time uh, just clocking where his punches were coming from because they come from weird like he throws from his hips, he'll throw from um, hands up. He, I mean, they're they're coming from all over. But uh, yeah, he's he's a it's a fun fight to fight Jerry, but it's yeah. tough that's <laughs> for sure. <laughs> what what could you know from your um, vantage point? What was Glover doing right, and what could he have done better? You know, there were moments there where I thought he actually was seconds away from winning, and then mm -hmm, again, mm -hmm. to your point, Yuri's heart comes through, and the guy's just so tight. I mean, even like with a minute left, Glover was in mount. Uh, what, what could he? Well, have that, done? that's one of those. Uh, I think Glover gave everything he could. You uh -huh. know, he gave his entire everything. You know, that that was a whole. For me, uh, that was just a case of youth. Jerry's youth won him that fight, I believe, you know, to have that little bit more, just a little bit more stamina, you know, just a little bit more what he was able to give that uh, Glover wasn't, you, you know what I'm saying? Um, mistake, things that Glover could have done, obviously we all could agree on this, not go for that guillotine. You know, yeah. I did, I made the same mistake, you know, go for the guillotine. I don't know what it is about Jerry. When you hear him, when you heard him, he leans forward and kind of like puts his head in your chest and you just, you just want to grab his neck, you know, and, and, we both did the same thing. He shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have done that. You know, that was, that was one instance where he might've been able to get a finish. Um, the head and arm, I felt like he rushed it a little bit, um, but I did the same thing. So <laughs> it's, it's, there's something about Jerry. When you fight him, you, you tend to rush things. I don't know why it's just the pace. I, I don't know.
sense of urgency, I guess. Mm -hmm. You obviously fought them at different points, but who is a trickier guy to be in there with, Yuri or John Jones? They're different. Uh, it's different, uh, different trickery. John's like a really calculated. Uh, he has like a long play, so everything he does is for later. Okay. So all his reads now are for later. He's gonna save everything for later. Jerry is just, it's just, it's tricky in that it's so fast and it's so different. You know what I'm saying? It's such a different look, like something you've never really seen before. And the way he does it is like nobody can do it. Mm. Uh, the way he moves and, and how, I guess, awkward. But it's the way he, he strikes and moves around is it's so efficient, but it's weird at the same time. So it's hard to clock. With John, it's, it's, it's a long game. It's a tricky long game. I will keep mentioning this one until the end, even though people, you know, we have such short memories in MMA. I still maintain, and I'm not trying to open old wounds, but I still maintain you beat John Jones in Houston in February of 2020. I still believe it till this day. We were just talking about the fight 30 minutes ago. Do you feel the same? And do you think about it a lot? Oh, absolutely. I feel the same. I mean, I was there. I know what happened. Just like, you know, everybody else who was in the arena or has a mind about fighting knows I won that fight. Um, I don't think about it that often. I think about it every once in a while. With like in this situation, uh, for instance, like right now, the current champ is a guy I lost to. The former champ was a guy I lost to. The former, former champ was a guy I lost to. Hmm. So it's like, it kind of like, by the way things are, are ending up, I think about it, you know, like it could have all been different. <laughs> it could all be so different right now. You know what I mean? I win that fight or I, I did win that fight with John. I get the nod, right? I get the nod or what's right, whatever, however you want to say it. Um, I win that night. Now I'm the champ. Now I fight. Who knows? Maybe I don't fight Jan. You know, maybe I fight someone else. Uh, you know, it all could be so different. It could all be so different right now. And I could be in a completely different situation, but it is what it is. You know, I've made my decisions. I've done what I've done and I'm here now. And, and luckily I'm still alive and I still have another chance at it. And uh, I'm excited about it. You know, that was my first go around. I see, you know, I first go, my first time around the UFC, you know, I made it to the top. I did my thing. I got another shot and then it didn't work out. So now I get another chance at it. And that's exciting for me because I'm going to do it. I'm going to do, I'm going to do it right this time. I'm going to get the title this time. You know what I mean? And I've learned lessons. I've seen the industry. I've seen how things are. I've seen how people are, you know, and, and it's really good. It's really cool. And I'm excited about it all this next time around. I felt like the first time, I kind of maybe put too much into like how the media perceives me and I care too much about like the fans talking crap or whatever like that. And uh, yeah, I made some, some mistakes there. I was my, you know, I didn't really know what to expect. And uh, yeah, this time I'm, I'm excited about it. How, and maybe you don't anymore, but in the, in the beginning you did, how do you not let that eat you up inside? Like that you win that fight, everything's different, as you just said. Is that something you had to learn over time? Oh, it took dude, it took almost. I mean, I was it was still eating me up going into the Jan fight, dude. Really? Like, I, it was it was something that it's a real, real, real effed up situation, man. Like, some could say it it, it was a, a fork in the road for my life. You know, like everything could have changed that night if the judges would have done the right thing. Yeah, you wonder if it's in uh, Vegas that fight or in you another know, jurisdiction whatever. with more, uh, you know, with more MMA that you get to know. And by the way, another thing that I've thought of, another what if, if there's no pandemic, I w I wonder if they run it back. Right, pandemic That's started whole, the next month. Pandemic, man, that thing fucking. Excuse the language. I'm sorry, man. No, it's all that right. That whole pandemic really, really put a wrench in my whole momentum, man. Bad. Really bad. Like, it was... I was doing, like, meet and greets and going to the fights and enjoying it, and all of a sudden, it's all over. Boom. Nothing. Yeah. <laughs> that, was, think, that sucked. Do you think there was a chance they run... I think I saw you the next month in Vegas. That was the last show. 
Do you yeah, think, that and, was the last show. Right? And uh, mm-hmm. Joanna fight Jang on that show. She just fought now. Just curious, do you think, was there any talk of running it back before everything shut down? Oh, yeah. That was the whole thing. The uh. whole thing was, we're going to run it back. And then it was like the pandemic started. And then I don't know what he started doing at home. He started feeling a different kind of way. And then all of a sudden it was, no, I'm going to have you screw that. There's too much risk. You, I don't get paid enough to fight him. I'm not going to fight him again without double. You got to pay me double to fight that guy again. And it was like, what? I, I was getting contender money, bro. Screw you. I should be getting pay-per-view this next fight. Right. Like, And it was a whole... It, all of a sudden it was weird it was weird how it all happened because he was he was down everything was good dana was like all right we're gonna do it and then all of a sudden nope <laughs> no nah, i'm gonna go heavyweight like all right well f me and then as soon as he said i'm going to heavyweight they're like all right well now you have to fight jam for the interim title and i was like oh sweet <laughs> cool let's do it i'm a yeah i'm a win yes let's go you know i was ready to go and then Deep down in my heart, I wasn't. So that wasn't the fight I wanted. Do you take any solace in the fact that you're probably the last guy he fights at 205? Maybe you're the reason why he doesn't want to fight at two. Like, do you, do you think of it like that? Well, that is the reason why. But uh, I, I don't take any solace in it. <laughs> I mean, if we were to rematch, then I could have had closure in the situation, you know? But it is what it is, I, I guess. That's on my resume, I guess. Last guy to fight John. I don't know why that <laughs> you know, that doesn't really mean much to me. You know, I guess right. only person to beat him would mean something to me. It right. does mean something to me, but it's whatever, man. All I know, all I know is we have a current champion who's a hell of a warrior, man. I fucking when I fought him, dude, it was it was like enlightening. It was awesome. It was right. awesome. It was Dude, fighting him, like, really, I was able to let out all the frustration and all the pain and everything I had inside of me from the Jones fight going forward. I know I didn't win, but I got to really, like, fight. I got to truly fight. I got to truly let it all out. And it felt good, man. And I'm excited to go in there again. Like, I'm not saying I'm going to go in there and just fight all crazy like that again, but that's kind of how I fight. So (laughs) we'll see, man. I mean... It, it brought back the love for the sport for me, fighting Jerry. Why so. is that? Like you say, enlightening, and it br- brings back the love and all that. Could you explain why? Like, what for someone listening, I think they might think like, "Wow, that's really interesting." But why? Even though you know it didn't go your way, why do you feel so strongly about this? Why did it affect you like that? Because it was a real fight, man. It was a, it was a, it was a real fight against a re- like a true like equal. Mm. You know what I mean? Like a guy that's equal, like his mind is, is just up there. His physical is up there. His everything, his athleticism is through the charts. You know what I mean? Like we were so like equally matched in terms of our, our physical gifts and our mental game or like how we feel about fighting. He loves fighting. I love fighting. He wants the purest fight. I want the purest fight. It's all about having that fight where you fight someone that brings the best out of you. You know what I mean? And like really takes you to another place, a place you didn't even think existed within yourself, a, a whole nother realm. Hmm. And uh, I was able to go there when I fought him. I mean, I was bleeding. I was bruised up, but I felt amazing. You know, it's hard. I love it. It's one of the, it, it was one of those fights that really was a true real fight. And it, it made me, it made me feel fulfilled. So you mentioned now you're shooting for October. That's what you'd like in terms yes. of return. Um, wh- why yes. Why October? Any particular reason that just feels right enough time? Like, wh- why did you pick October? Well, uh, it might have been sooner, but everybody's booked up, you know, one through whoever, you know, yeah. all the way out. So the way I see it is these guys are going to be fighting coming up soon. Give them a little time, you know, and come back in the fourth quarter. Okay. If they're feeling good. Um, but we'll see. I, I was more, uh, cause I was going to a year, no matter what, after the fight. So May to May, I fought last May. So May, I was going to year no matter what. And then I started looking at, you know, who was booked and what was going on around the division and everybody was kind of booked up. So I was like, okay, I'll, I'll wait till the fourth quarter and, uh, 
get a scrap out of all these, you know, whoever's whoever's available. Anyone on on the wish list, like number one for you, if you had your, if the UFC called you and said, who do you want to come back against? Um, there's just one guy I've always wanted to fight, and that's Anthony Smith. Other than that, I mean, it doesn't really matter. Why Anthony Smith? I feel like we both just kind of like we've we've been like parallel on this parallel path, you know, like we both kind of jumped on, like came onto the scene kind of at the same time. You know, we we're kind of like moving, moving the same speed, going the same way, but we never crossed paths. And I feel like it's just kind of destiny. You know, I feel like we definitely need to cross paths before it's all said and done. I mean, just makes sense. So if, if you had it your way, the return fight would be against Anthony, who, of course, is fighting July 30th. Coincidentally, our next guest on the show. That's crazy. Um, but that, that that would be up to you? If, the, if it were up um, to you, that would be... I, I wouldn't say it was... I, I, would, I wouldn't say just Anthony, but uh, that, that's just the that's guy the that I've yeah. kind of always wanted to fight. Yeah. Do you, uh, do you think they'll run it back with Glover and Yuri right away, or do you think they'll go in a different direction? Uh... Honestly, I think they'll go a di- different direction. I think they should run it back, but mm-hmm. I think uh, they will go with Jan, I think. But we'll see. Mm-hmm. And uh, by the way, for you, like, do you think before it's all said and done, you'll get another crack at John or or not? I think to get another crack at John, it's something I have to, I have to want to do. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, it has to be something that, okay, well, I'm going to fight this bull again. I'm going to heavyweight now. You know what I mean? Like mm. it would have to be something where I have to like chase him. You know what I mean? Do you think he fights again? I know he's not coming back to light heavyweight ever again. Right. That's just just not gonna happen. Uh, do I think he fights again? Yeah. I mean, isn't he, isn't he fighting Steve Bear for the title? Didn't they give him a title fight? Mm. Just off the rib, like, oh, I know we got all these you know heavyweights, but you know, like, hey, Jones, you want to fight for a title? Sure, far from a done deal. But yeah, that is something that they've wanted to do. But uh, actually, Stipe is the one kind of holding that up, it seems like, right now. Oh, okay. Um, well, I don't even know. I have no idea. But that's all I'm hearing yeah. and seeing on the news outlets and stuff. So it's like, what? All right, cool. I, mean, I know my boy Curtis, you know, is been perennial top three. Okay, let's give the kid a shot. But. Right. Um, so it's good. So, so to recap, you're in a good spot. You feel good. Uh, you feel great healthy spot. mentally, feel physically. Yes. You're happy. Mm-hmm. I'm happy and excited, man. I'm excited about the future, and I'm happy about where I am now. And I, I've really come to understand the ups and downs and the roller coaster ride and and the journey. The journey. It's a journey, man. Either you, you love it or you hate it. Much better off loving it. Mm. <laughs> if if based on the knowledge that you have now, if there's something that you could tell yourself from like three years ago, 2020, 2019, Dominic, what would you tell him? I honestly, man, I'd be, I would just tell myself, just chill, man. You, you can't make everybody happy. Enjoy your life and uh, do what you can while you can and don't do what you can do. That's all I would tell myself. I love it. Well, this has been great, Dominic. Really happy to see you in a good spot. Uh, definitely not counting you out. I think you're... Uh, yeah, man, come on. No, I, I <laughs> hey, I'm the one. I, I, you're, you're the uncount champ, in my opinion. You won. I was there in Houston. I remember it vividly. One, two, and three. You had him, and uh, sure. it would be a great story. I don't know if it happens with him at heavyweight. Whatever. You got your sights set on other people, and it's really interesting that you mentioned Yuri, Jan, John, the last three champs. That's crazy. Uh, which lets you know that you're right there. You're right there with those dudes, right? Exactly. I'll, come on, man. I know where I'm at. I, I'm. I'm still one of the best in the world. It, it doesn't just go away. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, I guess Anthony too, because it's a different letter. You know, I'm tired of fighting these J names. Yeah, know, what is up with that? Letter out. <laughs> that is a crazy thing. I saw my guy, Alex Weber, tweet this. Uh, Yuri, Jan, Jones, you had Chris in there, Jared, Jeremy, Joaquin, Jordan, Jesse, Jose. Like uh, more than half of your fights are against, like three quarters are against Jays. Dude, I don't know what's going on. I I'm I, I'm glad you put that on Twitter because I didn't even realize that. Oh, you saw that too. Fight. That's what the heck, dude? Crazy. <laughs> uh, all right, so Anthony with an A. Uh, we'll see. I'll uh, I'll get his thoughts on that. But uh, really great to to talk to you. Great to see you back. 
smiling. I already know what he's going to say. One, what, one thing. He's oh. like, no, I got other business going on. I got ankle lift, blah, blah, blah. Dom's too behind, blah, blah, blah. I already know, but it's not about that, dude. All right. We'll see what happens. Okay. All right. We'll just see what happens. <laughs> All right. We'll see. We'll see if you're right. Uh, thanks for doing this, Dom. It's, uh, it's really great to see you again. I appreciate you. I appreciate you coming on and uh, welcome back. Your reintroduction is going to be a fascinating story to watch. Thanks, Ariel. Appreciate it, man. I look forward to the rise, man. Yes, sir. There he is, Dominic Reyes, uh, the uncrowned champ at one point. I still maintain he won at UFC 247. And... Uh, A man who then followed that up with Jan, followed that up with the Yuri fight, but still young, 32. And like we were saying with New York Rick there for a minute, interesting times. Very interesting times at 205. My old friend Mick Maynard has done a, a nice job of rebuilding that weight class. It was tough. You lose John Jones. Where do you go from here, right? Biggest name in the sport, one of the biggest names in the sport, greatest champion, most decorated champion in UFC history. Where do you go from here? But slowly but surely, uh, the Glover story was great. The Jan story was great. Yuri now. You got Rakic, you got Smith and Ankalaev. Reyes returning. Let's not forget about Mr. Paul Craig. Jamal Hill in the mix. Nikita Krilov. Uh, I think people had uh, higher expectations for one Johnny Walker. But all of a sudden... Business, very interesting, picking up, as the great JR once said, at 2.05. And uh, without further ado, let's go to a man that we were just speaking about. Crazy when that happens. I did not plan that, I promise you. Our old pal, Mr. Anthony Smith, Lionheart Smith, who always comes correct with the equipment. He's such a big star now. He's in Bristol Sports Center. He's doing shows with Michael Bisping. Kind enough to carve out some time for us here on the MMA Hour. Hello, Anthony. How are you? I'm good. What were you talking about? You talking shit? No, but this was super interesting, <laughs> Anthony. Uh, so the guest right before, by the way, good to see you. Thank you for doing this. I'm a little starstruck. I saw you on ESPN. I'm like, wow, here we are. Anthony Smith is great. Superstar. Out here. Um, Just following your footsteps. I appreciate it. Um, by the way, before I, 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 I need to say this at the top, my condolences to you and your, and your family on, on the passing of your mother. I'm really, really sorry to hear that. And uh, I, I, I saw what you wrote. Uh, I actually missed it initially, and I felt like such an a-hole afterwards. We were texting, but very heartfelt. I'm a mama's boy as well, so I just wanted to say I'm sorry, and I'm I'm hoping, I know this doesn't happen in a month, but I'm hoping you're doing okay, all things considered. Yeah, thank you. Uh, we're getting through it. We're getting through it, man. Uh, it's been tough. Some days are easier than others, but uh, you don't really have a choice. You know what I mean? You just got to handle it and figure out how to move on. Well, wishing you the best and, and, and sending my love to you and your family. Uh, why we were talking about you was we just had Dominic Reyes on. And as you know, Dominic Reyes kind of just disappeared from the scene. Uh, yeah. Had not fought since May of last year against Yuri. And with 205 in the mix, this is how I kind of think about the show. I'm like, let's see what Dominic Reyes is up. Well, he seems to be in a good spot. He was uh, you know, quite open about his trials and tribulations to a degree and says he wants to return in October. And then I asked him if it was up to you who would you fight in your return? And he said you. And uh, Was he nice about it? He was very nice about it, but then he said, he was very respectful. He said, he feels like you guys have always been on parallel paths. You were kind of circling yeah. each other. You're at the top, all this stuff. And he also said that uh, he keeps fighting guys with J's in their first name, Yuri, Jan, John Jones. There's like a time. <laughs> so he'd like to fight an A. But he also said, I predict... Anthony will be like, nah, I got on Kalaev. He's on a losing streak. I'm not interested. He predicted that you would kind of be not so interested in it. So would you be interested in that? I've always said that I would love to fight Dominic Reyes. And I, and I think a long time ago, I think he kind of took offense to that. Um, and I, I think that some of that, he's, he's climbing to the top. He's getting close to a title shot. He's trying to be the best in the world. I get it. I've been there. Um, and I think he took offense to it. So then we kind of had this weird little heat, you know, like it wasn't super serious, but it was, it was definitely weird. Um, but to his point, <laughs> I'm, I'm not getting any younger. You right. Know? So if I'm setting my targets on somebody as, as impressive as a, a, a win over Dominic Reyes is to me and what it means to the boys in the back and the other guys in the division, um, it means nothing to the UFC because he is on a losing streak. Now it, 
like he can fight in the time that I have a fight. You know what I mean? Like he's got, he can take a fight or whatever. And I don't necessarily fight four times a year anymore. So it's not like I'm fighting every three months. So I'm absolutely open to fighting Dominic Reyes, but he's got to get on a winning streak. Okay. He's, he's, he's got to get a win. He's got to, he's got to come back and show that he is the Dominic Reyes that we remember him being on his way to fighting John Jones. Cause I don't think that the Dominic Reyes we've been getting is the real Dominic Reyes. You know, I, uh, I, I, I suspect we'll get into it later as far as the Yuri and, and, yep. Yon, and Glover fight. Um, but I, I hope that the people in the division are, are, are smart enough to look and, and not, I guess, base their analysis off of just one or two performances. So before we get into what happened Saturday, your weight class is super interesting right now, I think. I uh, just want to get into your story for a moment. So we last saw you in September. We think that maybe you're going to come back in December. You know, Merry Christmas to me, that whole thing. Uh, you and Rockage too. And then, unfortunately, we don't have it. You had to have surgery. How are you feeling now? Are you 100%? 100%. I okay. feel great. Okay. Yeah, I feel really, really good. I had the initial surgery, and then I got staph infection. Right. So then oh, had that was brutal, right? Washouts. And, yeah, it was terrible. It was awful. So, yeah, we got through that. And then I thought maybe I was going to slide in and fight Rakic when Blahovich got hurt. Yeah. Um, that was talked about initially uh, for whatever reason, whether it was on – the fighter side or the USC side, I'm not sure, but um, they decided just to push that fight back instead. And the Uncle Life thing had come up potentially to happen in, um, I think, March. When did Uncle Life fight Tiago? Is that March? Yes, March, yeah. Um, so I, I was initially offered it then, but mm -hmm. I wasn't sure if I could be ready by then. And Tiago jumped on it right away, so they kind of passed me up. Okay. Uh, would you have preferred to have fought sooner? You're fighting July yeah, 30th sure. in Dallas on the pay-per-view card. Yeah. So when would you have preferred? Uh, I wanted international fight week at the very latest. Okay. Um, because you know me, I, I hate fighting in the summer. I hate everything about it. Right. Like, I just can't stand it. It's hot as shit right now. My kids are out of school. Like I, I don't, I hate being in training camp away from my family when my kids are out of school. So I thought you're like, ah, international fight week. You know, it's only a couple weeks into the summer. Like I can make it work, but, um, you know, at the end of the day, you know, I gotta, I gotta do my job. So how I feel about it and the timing doesn't necessarily matter. So you're getting it, uh, 28 days later against uncle live. Were you happy with uncle live as your guy or did you want someone yeah, else? Yeah. Yeah. No, I like the matchup. I, I like the matchup. I wish it was, I wish he was more popular. I wish that the, uh, the masters kind of, I guess attached to him a little bit better because it, you know, it, it means more when everyone else cares or it's more fun when everybody else cares, I guess. But, um, it, it's exciting for me. He's, he's, he's got a lot of positive qualities. Um, and, and I like the map. I like what it does for me as far as the title shot. Like I, I that, <laughs> that's cool. It's interesting. I, I thought he lost some momentum after the Santos fight because, uh, it just wasn't the performance that people were expecting. What did you think of his performance? It was exactly what I expected. Um, it was okay. Yeah, you know, I think I think in this game, people get wrapped up into the buzz and and, and the media machine and, and the marketing monster that that is MMA, and and it's real easy to, I don't know, it's real easy to to look at the highlights and and not actually watch the fight. You know what I mean? Like the, I think it was Lungi and Bula that was that nasty front kick knockout he had. Mm -hmm. Has anybody ever seen the rest of that fight? Cause it wasn't that great. You know what I mean? Like he, he got pushed, he got hurt, he got tested. Um, so I, I as, as good as he is, he, he's not the boogeyman that everyone has made him out to be, at least in my opinion. Uh, he's absolutely dangerous. He's, he's got a lot of great qualities. He's really, really solid, but um, I'm excited to kind of knock off another one of those, those, those monsters, you know? And, and, and I suspected that that's how the fight would go because for whatever reason, since Tiago Santos fought John Jones, he hasn't moved forward a whole lot and he's not the best part about Tiago Santos is, is his fearlessness and his ferocity. If he's not moving forward and being super offensive, he's, he, he's fairly predictable. So it, it worked for him in the John Jones fight because he forced John to, to be the aggressor and John necessarily doesn't like doing that very, very often. So it worked then. So I don't know if he's fallen into why, you know, I almost beat John Jones by fighting this way but you, you kind of got to adjust. So I believe in the buildup to this weekend, Dana White was doing some media and I'm pretty sure he said that your fight is a number one contender fight winner versus you, you know, you versus Ankalaev gets the title shot. 
Were you told the same behind the scenes or when he said it, was that the first time you had heard that? Uh, you know, the UFC doesn't like putting things in writing, but that was the, that was the direction the conversation went when we, when we booked this. Okay. Based on what happened. Nothing, that- nothing's, nothing's ever for sure. Okay. That's what it sounds like. That's what it sounded like from Jump Street. So then my question is, based on what happened Saturday night, do you feel like that's still the case? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Um, I know that, you know, Jan Blachowicz is doing the best job he can possibly do at politicking and trying to get his way into that fight. Um, I think it's really funny that you got these, you know, like these three European guys that for whatever reason are, are, are kind of beefing a little bit, um, kind of fighting for the, I don't know, to see who the king of king of Europe is, but I don't know they're going to fuck around. Some, some nerd from Nebraska is going to sneak up and take it all from him. I'm telling you, I, th- I think after the fight, it'll be an easy decision. I really do. And not just Europe, by the way, Eastern Europe, right? It's uh, it's Rakic right. from Australia. It's Jan from Poland. It's uh, Czech Republic's Yuri. It is interesting. I think they all want to be the king of that area. Jan, mm-hmm. I got to give him props for this. This is why I always say to people, if, if, if your belt is being defended, if the guy, like, Go sit in the front row because things can happen when you're there at the fight. He went and sat in the right. front row and you saw what, like there was a kiss. I don't know if that ultimately gets it, but it at least gets him in the conversation as opposed to being home in Poland watching that, right? Yeah, when that, that whole little weird situation with, with Jan. And, uh, listen, I'm not the biggest fan of Rakic and he's not the biggest fan of me. Right. Um, but in my opinion, he was winning that fight before he got injured. And, you know, then it, it's, it's weird... I guess I just always kick back to kind of how I would react, you know, like if I got the title in a way that wasn't, that was other than winning it, I would never hold the belt. You know, we talked about it with Aljo before he kind of really won it. Um, you know, like you don't walk around with the title if you didn't actually win it. Like we never seen DC with it. Like if you win uh, a fight off an injury default, like you don't get to go and politic your way into things off that win. Like it just doesn't work like that. Maybe it'll work. Who knows? But it's not how I would probably do it. Okay, so I think that uh, the path was a lot clearer had Glover beat him. As a result yeah, of sure. Yeri winning, are you worried that they run it back right away? No, because I, I would... I don't think that they probably will. Just because it's not like the overwhelming noise that I'm hearing. You know, mm-hmm. like you don't hear a bunch of... like. I don't think Dana said that, you know, he hasn't come out. You haven't heard anybody like in any brass talking about it. Um, but I also wouldn't be in a position to say anything about it if they did, just because I mean, Glover is who he is. The fight was what it was. And he was well on his way to, to winning, you know, on the judges scorecards before the finish, you know, if they want to rematch it, I think Glover deserves it. So it, it's, it would definitely put a hiccup in my plans. Uh, but I wouldn't be in a position to, to have anything negative to say about it. Were you upset? I mean, I know you were an analyst on Saturday, but this is your weight class. You're still an active fighter. Were you upset when Yuri won because it makes things a little more complicated, especially how great the fight was? No, no I, I, yeah, yes, I was upset, but not for my own positioning in the division, to be honest with you. Uh, I just like Glover Teixeira. I like that guy. He, he deserves good things to happen to him. I know I've said that a hundred times and it's not a soundbite. Like I genuinely like him. Like we're DMing really on Instagram, like an hour after the fight. Like I like him a lot and I want good things to happen as long as I'm not the one standing across from him. Um, and it, he just, I think he, he works so hard for the, the, the entire fight. He, he, it's such a, it was such a weird fight, but he, he, he went through a lot of adversity. He dealt with a lot of bullshit. He dealt with a lot of, you know, I, uh, he was able to stay safe in a position he shouldn't be able to. Like, he shouldn't have been able to stand on his feet and stay upright that long with a guy like Prohaska. But, um, you know, then for it to end the way that it ended, like, all he had to do was beat the clock. Yeah. You know, that, that just sucks. So I was, I was definitely disappointed for that. He had Mount with a minute to go. And he, I thought he was up 3-1 going into the fifth. And I tweeted yeah. that and I got so, everyone was like, you're an idiot. Now you never know on Twitter because people are betting and they want to believe what they believe. But mm-hmm. I got a lot of two twos. Even so, if the fight, if the final round just ends with him and Mount or even, you know, they go back on their feet, I think he wins that round, right? I mean, we don't know. Yeah. So then he wins the fight regardless of if it's two two or not. What, 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 
you know, like you watch it, what could he have done differently? Because I thought actually earlier in the fight, there were some moments where he could have won. Obviously the guillotine was a big mistake. Um, the guillotine, the, the jump in that guillotine was a huge mistake. Right. Uh, to be honest, I, I think both of those guys had the worst performances of their life at the same time. Wow. Because the, I, I really do. For the first time, Glover looked a little old. Um, for the first time in a while. Yeah. That's not the Glover I got. Right, right. That's not the one Tiago Santos got. Right. You know, like, well, I don't know who that guy was, but fortunately for him, I think Prohaska had one of the worst performances he could have possibly had too. And, and they just made terrible decisions. Like the fight IQ, if you would have put it together, wouldn't be in the double digits during that fight. They just both just didn't fight smart at all. And before anybody roasts me for talking shit or talking about, I'm, I'm, I'm not being critical. I think that they both, fought with bravery like that, those are brave performances from both of those guys and, and i i couldn't rave about it more but i'm also an analyst and so yeah. i can analyze their performances and they were awful as far as the x's and the their coaches are not happy i'll tell you that so it, from an excitement standpoint like watching it it couldn't have been fucking better right but as far as like the the, the technical stuff that went on it was, it was all bad. Like Glover was mounted several times. He had his back several times. He had him deep in submissions a couple times. He lost position. I've never, I don't know if I've ever seen Glover lose positions like that before. Uh, Cause it, I know that Yuri Prohaska is the, the deficit between those two guys in the grappling department is huge. And I'm a high level black belt and I've, I've submitted several world champions. I like, I, I grapple at a very fucking high level and I was stuck like fucking Chuck. So like, I don't know what happened from like where the Glover was that had me stuck on my back. Like where was that guy? Because that's not the same guy that fought on Saturday night. First of all, this is why you have become one of my favorite analysts and why I think that you should be a fixture on all the big shows, not just if it's, you know, a pay-per-view with light heavyweights, tremendous stuff. And you don't care. You don't mince words. I appreciate that. Uh, very smart of Bisping to actually you brought him on your show, right? Cause it's your show. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah. 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 For the record. Okay, yeah, he's yes. on my show. All right. Um, <laughs> although the name is his old name. So I'm not sure how that, uh, Works out, but well, we're working on that. You're working on okay, yeah. You know, it's yeah, yeah enough it's, of this uh, believe you me nonsense. It's just artwork. It should be yeah, the the artwork. what is it? The count and the lionheart or the lionheart and the count, like something, you know, something yeah. like that. We're gonna figure something out. All right, fair enough. Um, could I ask you though, like when you say like you know, Glover, I fight IQ all this what do you chalk this up to? Do you just think Father Time has has caught up to him? Like wh why do you think he made so many mistakes? Because he was looking so good in his last few fights. I, I don't know. I, I think it, it could be a culmination of a few things. It, it, it maybe could be his age. I don't, I, he didn't, he didn't fight like an old man though. Mm. Like uh, if you, if you really like go back and watch it, both of those guys, it was one way traffic when those guys got to their spots. So it, we all said, you know, if, if Yuri's striking and he's doing what he wants to do, it's it, he's going to finish Glover. And we, then we said, well, if Glover gets him on the ground, mm -hmm. he's probably going to finish him. Both guys got to both of their spots several times. And it was, it was like a, a runaway train. They were just beating the shit out of each other. But for some reason, it's, they just couldn't cap it off. You know what I mean? And get that finish. And uh, defensively, Glover has been very, very good in his last three or four fights. He, he has been clipped a little bit. I think maybe his reaction time has just slipped just a tiny bit. But he's, he's rolling with the punches. He's not taking anything clean. And then he fights Prohaska and... and he couldn't, he couldn't get out of the way. It, it, it was just the, the oddest thing. So I don't know if it was the weight cut, the travel, the time that they fought. Mm. The, he, he did start to bring up his weight cut a little bit and realized he, maybe he was going to get some shit for making excuses. Um, I, don't, I don't call that an excuse. I would say a reason for the way that he performed. Um, but it sounds like he had a tough weight cut. So I, I don't know. But it, even the way he reacted when he was getting punched was different. You know, his arms kind of went straight and, you know, he, like he almost would bend at the waist a little. It was, it was, I don't know, it was just different. And Yuri looked totally different too. Wow. Uh, when he had, when Glover had the, uh, the tights pulled up like DC, I started to worry a little bit. I was like, uh oh. Yeah. yeah right. It, you know, the higher the shorts, the, the closer you are to the end. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> he did look very DC like <laughs> with those, you know, tucked in. Um, and, and so at this point, I wonder, because I I think, you know, you mentioned Dana White not saying anything. I think he was partying with his 21-year-old uh, son, so maybe he was a little bit... I saw him do a little uh, Instagram Live, but he didn't have, like, a press conference or anything. I right. wonder if Glover's age and being at the end of his career helps him or hurts him, where you could say, oh, this fight was so good, 
we got to run it back because we won't have a chance. Or this fight was so good, great, we got a new champ. If we run it back and Glover wins, now we're risking he retires when he wins the belt and now we have a vacant title and it's a mess of a situation. Do you think it helps him or it hurts him? I think that depends on how they feel about Yuri Prohaska. Mm. And I think him getting a title shot off of two wins, you know, pretty early in his career yeah. Yeah. would probably tell us that they yes. think pretty high of, of yeah. Mr. Prohaska. So um, I, I, that coupled with maybe Glover's age, maybe it does hurt him a little bit. You know, maybe they, maybe they banish him to just fun fights. I don't know. Do you see the scene? Do you see the parade that he just got in Czech Republic? You see this on social media? Uh uh-uh. uh. Oh, oh yeah. This week? I yo, over seven thousand people there just like a couple of hours ago. Oh man. Massive, massive scene. He's there with the That's belt. The dream right there. Isn't that incredible? Hold, holding the belt in the octagon is definitely something that ever that all of us, I think, dream about and think about. But getting off the plane when you get home and like having your whole community celebrating you, that's that's cool. A legit that's parade. Good for him. Good for him. Do you, think he, for that do you think he beats Jan? I think that's a good fight. I think it's close. Uh, he is, he, he's very hittable. Yeah. Jan's got, you know, the Polish power is a real thing. So I, I don't know. I don't know. But I, I think it's a tougher fight for Yuri than it is for Jan. Fair. What Stylistically. Is, what is everyone... He's now won 13 in a row, uh, most of them via finish. Now, I know a lot of them were in Ryzen, and it's not the level that he's fighting at now, but the last three were against top-level guys, right? The best of the best. What are they doing wrong against him from your from your perspective? Um. Well, you can't really play... Number one, you can't play his game. Like, you can't get wrapped up into the the flash and the, and kind of the bullshit. But everyone lets him kind of dictate the pace and lets him walk forward. Anytime that Glover was do, being successful on his feet, he was the one pressuring. But with his current state of durability, I'm not sure he can do that the entire time. So it would be kind of blitzes and, and flashes of it. Um, you you got to pressure a guy like that. You can't, you can't give him so much space to be so creative. Which is why I've always wanted that to like have that fight because it just seems like so much fun. Because I don't, I don't know how to fight any other way. I just walk forward and just turn it on and go. And you know, most of the time it works. Sometimes it doesn't. But um, you got to pressure him. You got to, and you got to be able to. When you put him on his back, you got to make it pay because he's having too much fun. Hmm. You got to, you got to make him not enjoy it because he does have a lot of fun ways in there. Even when Glover's on top of him, he's smiling and patting him on the back and. Like you gotta, you gotta make him pay for everything. I don't know. Did you ever watch the, uh, the first King Mo Yuri mm. fight? Yeah, yeah. That's the one he that's lost. Kind of how you gotta. Yeah. That's kind of how you gotta fight him. Like, you can give a little bit when he starts to blitz, but at some point in time, you gotta hold your ground, and no one's holding their ground at all. You gotta sometimes you gotta stick your fucking back foot in the mat and say, "Not right now." Like, we're not doing this shit. I'm not, I'm not backing up. I'm not running from you. I'm not circling out. We're not fucking resetting. We're, I'm, you got to draw a line in the sand. And like, I'm not fucking backing up any further than this. And I think that's when he starts to have some problems. Because that's kind of what King Mo did. Mm-hmm. Pressured him. Took a couple steps back as Yuri was blitzing. And he stuck his back foot in the mat and, and blasted a right hand. That's kind of, you got you to gotta stand your ground to that guy. I hate the fact that I'm asking this. But the tap, should that be like, penal, like, should... Uh, I watched it initially and you're like, did he just tap? What happened? And then you see, oh, he's just messing around. That's playing yeah, with that's fire, the same no? Thing. I was like, what is ha-? Yeah, it's definitely playing with fire. <laughs> it's definitely dangerous. Uh, I was fighting in Bellator a long time ago on my way back to the UFC. And I had this guy going for a, a knee bar. His name was Brian Green. Uh, he was like that. He, he was that. It, that fight was huge. He fought Kimbo Slice in a boxing match. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and was beating Kimbo for like 10 rounds. And Kimbo caught him with like 10 seconds left, knocked him out. Um, but anyways, that guy was going for a knee bar and his like ass was kind of like up on my face. So I rubbed his butt and slapped his butt, like, you know, thinking it was supposed to be funny. And the referee chewed me up and down in the locker room afterwards. Wow. Just let me have it. Cause he was like, what if, what if I would have stopped that fight? You know, like a fight you're dominating. And now look, now you look like an idiot. It's a fair point. By the way, for, for us, um, us, you know, layman's us, us, us mortals, if you will, uh, we say that, yo, how could, how could you tap? You've never been tapped before. 30 seconds left, Glover. How could you do it? When you saw that, given what they had been through, 
Do you understand why he tapped? Even though the hooks weren't in, even though you know he was en route to winning, are you surprised or not surprised given what they had just been through that he tapped? I'm not surprised by the tap. I'm surprised by the lack of uh, of just the lack of focus in that moment to to let him get there. Mm. Um, it's just just a lapse in in focus. You can't you can't lose focus like that. It, after especially after being in it for so long, like you just you can't make those kind of mistakes that late in a fight. But the choke itself, I know everyone keeps talking like it was a rear naked choke with no hooks in. Like that was turning into a bulldog choke. Mm. Those, like you almost can't get into a worse choke than that where you can't, there's no hooks. There's like kind of next to you and the, it only gets worse from there. So as Yuri was walking around with that choke, the like had Glover not tapped, he would have ended up belly down with Yuri's feet facing the opposite way. Like almost I don't know, like some straight up WWE shit. Like it'll make you feel like your neck's going to break. Wow. You know, like it'll be you know, just like you could like, when you get that choke, you feel like you could pop someone's head right off their body. Wow. Because there's so much leverage once you kind of get your body all the way around. And he wasn't even halfway through it yet. And it was already that bad. So I don't, I don't fault Glover for tapping because he knows exactly where that was going. It was only going to get worse. Um, just because you're one of the best analysts, just two quick ones on the, the card and then I'll let you go. If, uh, if there's no clash of heads, is Tyler Santos the flyweight champion on this Monday? Man, I knew we were going to go here because I'm going to get flamed for this. Oh. Even with the clash of heads, I, I almost just walked to the bathroom when they were getting ready to read the scores because I was so positive that Tyler Santos is the new champion. Hmm. Like, I feel terrible for her. One, that fucking, we can argue the three, two, yeah, yeah. one way or the other. Yeah. You know, like I had it for Santos. But 49, 46. He, he, yeah, it's crazy. You gave her the, someone gave her the first round. Yeah. She was controlled for like four minutes and 13 seconds. Like, that's insane. That's absolutely insane. I feel like that scorecard alone is, is so disrespectful to, to the, the job that not just Tyler Santos, but that, that they both did. I, I, I couldn't believe it. But yeah, I think without the headbutt, I think that it's probably even more clear. By the way, uh, I hope you don't get flamed. I, I said it earlier in the show. I had a 3-2 Tyler Santos. I thought you won the first three mm -hmm. rounds. I, I was pretty yeah. surprised. With no question, yeah. I thought. Like, I didn't... It wasn't like, oh, that was a close round. Like, maybe it could have done... Like, I, like, all right, that's Tyler Santos. All right, that one's Tyler Santos. All right, that one's Tyler Santos. Crazy, and then right? Valentina turned on, yeah. It was wild to watch it because you're like, holy crap, we rarely see her in tough spots. Obviously, we saw her in a tough spot against Jennifer Maya, but not for that long. And then consecutive rounds... Uh, it was kind of surreal to watch it all unfold. I'd like to see her get an immediate rematch, but I don't know if they'll do that. Uh, you think Misha Tate could beat her? It, she could. Yeah, she could. She's a she's a good enough wrestler. You know, if she can if she can be fast and strong and have good entries and and implement a similar game plan. Tyler Santos is super strong though. Mm. So even yeah, Misha's going to have to be as strong as she's ever been in her whole life to just win those kind of positions like that. But even if they ran it back, I bet Valentina just dusts her then. Yeah. Because she gets so good in between fights. And and now she's got 25 minutes of data to to hash her, you know, to hash, just to to, to rehash. Like, that's, it's not fair. Because she was going to, even if she beat her, she's going to have to rematch her again. But at least it gets some pay-per-view points and some love for it. This is why my heart breaks for these types of fighters. I mean, Dominic Reyes as well against John Jones. It's why I, I was saying if I were you, I would have, you know, just because the gap, people don't think, the fans don't think the gap between being that contender who's on the come up and a lot of people don't know who you are, in her case especially, and you beat Val Valentina and then there's an immediate rematch and now you're the champion. And you're Everything changes. Everything changes. And uh, right. it, it's, it's really life hard. changing. Yeah. It's life changing. That's a life changing amount of money and opportunities. And I mean, can you imagine how much a, a, a very pretty monster of a fighter, Brazilian female, how much money she would make in marketing dollars and endorsements from Saturday night until whenever the rematch is? Like, forget how much money she'd make in the rematch. She would make millions of dollars in between. Mm. And then, however many million dollars she makes. Hopefully in the fight, like, like it's crazy. It's crazy.
And I'll never forget seeing Tiago Santos being um, just kind of wheeled out of the T-Mobile arena after fighting John Jones, both knees shot. And we suspected that he probably needed surgery, at least on one of them. And thinking like, man, that dude, obviously there was no real controversy there, but he had his moments and who knows if he doesn't get injured. Like <laughs> he's now being wheeled out with nothing, right? With no belt, with no, uh, you know, rematch, whatever. Yeah. That line. No is bag, no gold. Nothing. It's cr- it's <laughs> nothing. A, it's a crazy, crazy thing. Um, crazy. So as we end up uh, this this particular chat, you're fighting July 30th. You got Magomed on Kalaev. Ha- have the stakes been raised in in the sense that you need to do something? In, like, a, is a decision not enough based on what happened here? And this talk of maybe Glover and Jan sitting there. Yeah, I need to finish. You need okay. I need to finish. You need that. Need finish. Did you say that to yourself? Yeah. That's yeah. a lot of pressure. That Magomed on Clive is a tough guy. I know he's not, you know the biggest name but that's a tough thing to say right no no it's not i don't think so okay no no i mean i try i'm trying to finish everybody but right it needs to be it needs to be emphatic it needs to be impressive like a close fight with uncle life's not enough for me you think close fight you don't get the shot i don't know and i don't like that Mm. i don't like that i don't know it just a win over him is probably enough but it's not it's not good enough to make me feel really good about it. You know what I mean? Like I'm not going to bed just trying to squeeze one out. Right. It's I'm, you know, I'm trying to, I don't want to just squeak out some, some quick decision and, you know, jump up on him two rounds and then just survive in a third. That's not my, that's not right. my plan. It's I need to finish. And I think it's possible. I really do. I like, I, again, I'm not discrediting him. He is very, very good. He doesn't make a lot of mistakes. He doesn't do a lot to make a lot of mistakes. He, he, he's, he's, he's kind of low output. He wants to have a, a slower methodical kind of chess match. Um, and I got to draw him out of that. And, and he doesn't like fighting like that. So I just, you know, I think that, I think he's, I, th- I think I can finish him. I really do. It's not just about beating him. I think I can finish him. I know you're tight with the boys in the back. As you said, they didn't give you insight afterwards. Like, don't worry. You still got the title shot. We're going to, you know, nothing. No, nah, no. Nah. You don't text the boys. Come on. Use that. Not recently. Use that number. Use those connections. No, you got to save those. Okay. See? You got to save those for like when you're walking out with a finish. Okay. That's like when you cash in on those. Okay. Fair enough. That's why you're in your position and I'm in my position. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, they don't love you? I can't. I can't. There's nothing for me to save anymore. I can't. uh, I don't know. (laughs) Love is a strong word. I I I wish that your old logo wasn't so big and bold though. What do you mean? It's going to be tough to cover with mine. Oh, you're coming for everything I worked for? All right. You can have no, it, by I'm the just way. Kidding. You can have it, by the way. I'm, no problem. I'm going to take it. You know, I, I'll take it. Listen, better you than uh, <laughs> some other people who took it, but I won't get into all of that. Uh, Anthony, you're the man. Keep up the great work. You, Bisping, you, are, you're still doing serious too, right? Yeah. Yeah. Jeez, you're everywhere. Uh, doing it. the ESPN thing. And then, of course, the big one. UFC 277, July 30th, Dallas, Texas. Massive hey, fight. You should, before you go, you yeah. should go to that fight. And, and You think? Yes. Yeah, why not? When's I, the last event you went to? The I last event I went to, uh, UFC? Yeah. UFC was UFC 248, March of 2020. Uh, the great Israel Adesanya versus Yoel Romero main event. I did see Zhang Wei Li versus... Uh, Yoana, the last thing, I, by the way, the last thing I ever did on a broadcast, do you, do you know what the last thing I ever did on a broadcast was? Like on an official ESPN Plus broadcast or ESPN broadcast? Yeah. Uh-uh. Was was standing next to you and John Anik when Chael had an emergency and I got the right, fil- remember that? In Houston, Houston after Texas, Dominic Reyes and John, John Jones. Jones. Dominic Reyes, yeah. Yeah. And you did your radio show? Before. Did my radio show. Of course, Houston, we all know what happened. You know, you saw here. Well, we don't need to get into that. But people keep asking. Yeah. You, know, you saw the whole thing. Gangster. You saw, yeah. <laughs> I, don't know, I like to pat myself on the uh, back. But no, you should, uh, you should just make, make Dallas, Texas your return to live right. events and coverage. We'll work on it. You're lying. <laughs> just, just accept it right now. Okay. It's an invitation. Okay. I, I appreciate the invitation. I appreciate I'll it. I'll send you a save the date. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate that. Oh, my God. Last thing. Okay. Last thing. I am embarrassed from Saturday night when I was on your little, what is that called? Oh, yeah, yeah. Spotify Spotify Live. Yeah. So Jake has been producing me on ESPN forever. Like I've talked to him 
I can't even tell you how many times like we chit chat, we text all the time. And then you, you asked me who was corporate Jake. The show. Yeah. And I said, Jake, and you said corporate Jake. And I said to myself, who the F is that? That's the same fucking guy. Yeah. The whole time. I didn't know that Jake was that corporate. I know. Oh, wow. It's corporate Jake. On wow. Your show. Yeah. Cause I'd never, I had never seen him like on your show. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But every time I, you know, like it's, there's been several times where I've my like, God, his voice is so familiar. Yeah. 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 And then we'll, I just keep on going and, you know, we chit chat and you know, whatever. And then I didn't, we've, for whatever reason, he, he and I have never talked about you. Oh, that's weird. I mean, that is weird. I'm not offended. Yeah. But yeah. No, he was my producer there for three years. Corporate Jake. Hunk of a man. Hunk of a man. Gigantic. No idea. Are you going to his wedding? No is idea. that why you said save the date? I did. Yeah. Oh, that's, yeah that's right. See? About it. See? There you <laughs> yeah. go. I'll see you there yeah. in November. Perfect. Perfect. Wow. How about that? Yeah. It's all but I feel together. like a dumbass. I had no idea that Jake, my Jake, and your Jake are the same, same guy. <laughs> don't worry. Same he wasn't dude. listening. He has no idea unless he's listening now and now he knows, but don't worry about it. Yeah. Well, I'm going to call him now. I have to tell him. All right. I wasn't going to even say anything, but you know, I'm okay with just throwing myself under the bus. Tell him I say hi. I will. Who you got on after me? Uh, Leon Edwards. He's waiting. He's probably really mad at me. He's, he's, oh, he's fighting okay. for the well, belt. I'm a, I'm a fucking huge Leon Edwards fan. Okay. So tell him I say He'll appreciate that. Tell, tell him to come on the goddamn Believe You Me podcast. That's no. What he needs to do. I'm not going to do That's that. That's what he needs to do. I think he probably heard it. All right. Well, we'll see. I'll ask him right now. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you, Anthony. Right, Good you. luck to you. July Later 30th. About. There he is. Uh, Lionheart Anthony Smith. Uh, let's not. This is the beauty of having two Zoom machines now. Let's go to uh, Mr. Leon Edwards. He's fighting August 20th in Salt Lake City. And uh, I'm very excited. We did it. We finally did it. Leon, we finally did it. Where are you? Where is Leon? I need to see his face. Where's Leon? There he is, Leon. We did it. Yeah. Frank, give us some celebratory music. We got it done, Aaron. We freaking did it, Leon. Let's go. Breaking news. There it is. We're clapping it up for Leon. Oh, my gosh. Did you hear uh, Anthony Smith say he's a big fan of yours? Did you hear that? Yeah, for sure. I'm, I'm, I'm a huge fan as well, so... Well, you have to say that now, right? Thanks. <laughs> no, nah, I'm a fan anyway. Okay, fine. He's a great fight. <laughs> Leon. Whew. August 20th, my friend. Finally. You're finally getting the title finally. shot. Could I ask... I know they announced it, and thank you for coming on. I really appreciate it. It's great to talk to you after the big <laughs> announcement on Saturday. When did you find out for sure that this was happening? Um, Last week. Um, they announced... Sean messaged Tim saying you're gonna get the contract this week. So from then on, he was up. I was in training anyway towards July. First July the second. Now there was July um, August, and you know, also I was in training anyway for the for the fight. Until you got the contract, was there any part of you that was afraid that you know you were gonna get screwed yeah, over? For sure. Yeah. Oh no, 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 I'm not screwed over. But I, I thought it'd be like a, a longer wait. You know, I thought it'd be going to like fucking end of, like end of the year, like October, November ish. So I'm happy that I got to get to to fight this summer, you know. And it's five days before my birthday, so oh yeah, it's be a it'd be a fantastic birthday present. And uh, and and what was it like? Could you describe when you got that contract when you signed it first UFC title fight? What was it like? Um, it, it was amazing, you know. But it's been a long, 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 uh, yes. you know, it's been what, two, three years, <laughs> two, three years. Jesus so ain't, ain't like a shock. I mean, ain't a shock. It's been like nine, ten fights in a row, you know. Like I've, I've earned this shot a long, long time ago. So um, I am look, looking forward to grabbing it with both um, hands and representing for my countries and uh, I'm, I'm a family. By the way, when you see a guy like Yuri get a title shot after two wins in the UFC, are you like, come on, man, what the hell is this? I know, you know, I know he's a paradigm <laughs> guy too, not hating, but like, geez, you had to take yeah. a few detours to get here. Um, nah, like you said, he's a paradigm guy and he, he, he did a good job on the weekend, you know, so fair play to him. Um, so yeah, it's all good. Uh, so, I, so I had originally heard July 2nd. I actually heard, I don't know if you can correct me here if I'm wrong, I heard there was for a mm -hmm. moment, some talk of this fight happening in London, that the London card would have been a pay-per-view and you would have fought there. Is that true? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was mentioned to me as well. So they were wow. trying to change um, the O2 to, to, to a pay-per-view. But I think to do that, you need to have it like four in the morning. Like right. I, did, I did it before when I fought in uh, Manchester. So Bisping was defending his belt. Um, it was like four or five in the morning, the card was. So they couldn't change the O2 to, to that time. You know? So oh. yeah, now here we are. That's that was the holdup. They couldn't do a four a.m. card at the uh, the O two. Wow. What? 
What I would think they, so? Yeah, that's all I suppose. Were you surprised that Usman would have done that? Would as the champion, he would have gone to your territory? I, I, I was in doubt to be fair when I said it to him. I was like, he won't yeah. come over here to fight me, you right. know. But um, if he did, it would have been um, fantastic for the UK and um, for, for, for over here, you know. But I had doubts in my head thinking, nah, I can't, I can't see him saying, yeah, yeah. he's gonna come over and fight me, you know. That's a plane like stupid money. Right. And then all that stuff about his hand, because a few weeks ago I reported that this was the plan, and then his manager went out, I was like, no, nah, the hand, this and that. Were, you, were Was there ever any talk of interim belt or having you wait a really long time, anything like that? No, nah, never. Just, they just kept saying, like, every week Tim was going going back and forth with the UFC and just kept saying, like, as soon as hands are ready, we'll, we'll send the contract over, you know? So um, I know that we got cleared, cleared in May, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, his hands got cleared in May, so... Yes, so here we are. There was never like no talks interim title. I was saying to Tim though, like I'm not waiting till the end of the year. If that was the case, I'll fight someone else, you know, for the for the interim belt. Okay. Like, would, uh, yeah. Now I would imagine you would take this fight. You would have this fight here in this studio. You would do it at the apex. You would do it on the moon. But when you heard Utah of all places, what did you think? I think I, <laughs> I, think I where Utah is. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck is that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got clear what I is. I said, so where the hell? What the fuck is Utah? He's like, oh, I'm in America. I was like, oh, mate. Come I, like, just my like, I wanted to be Vegas, you know, because tell everyone, uh, like, I would walk around the street in like Birmingham. Everywhere I go, like, I wanted to fight, wanted to fight. I was like, oh, it's going to be Vegas. Like, tell everyone it's going to be in Vegas. You know? oh, no. Now they're like, it's in Utah. Utah. I was like, mate. Come on. <laughs> you honestly never so, heard of Utah I, before. No, I heard of Utah, but I didn't got a clue like <laughs> where it is, you know, where about where about right. America is. Yeah. Is it by Vegas? No. It's it's on the west coast. Yeah, it's closer to Vegas. It's in that yeah, vicinity. It's closer to Vegas. Do you have any idea why it's happening in Utah? Um no, I ain't got a clue. It's only this week we've got like I think I confirmed it's Utah, you know. First there's like right. we might change venues, we might we might do some somewhere else, you know, but I think this week it's like hundred percent Utah, but nah. All right. It's mad. But he, like I said, I, I couldn't give two shits, you know. Like, this is my opportunity to become a world champion and what I've been working for for a long time, you know. So, um, like I said, I couldn't be wherever his hair there or yeah, I couldn't give two shits. Right. Um, so the last time we saw you was actually almost exa- a little over a year ago, right? It was when you fought uh, Diaz in Arizona. But you've mm-hmm. been healthy this whole year. Uh, do you feel yeah. like the, the time off helps you, hurts you? Do you, you know, because you were supposed to fight in December against Jorge. Yeah, uh, it's very rare to have this kind of time off, but no fights, and you're healthy. It's not like you're coming back from an injury. Does it help you? Does it hurt you? How do you feel? I've, I've been healthy since you know all these ups and downs I've having. I, I've been healthy all the way through, you know, apart from when I had COVID. Sure, I've been healthy all the way all, all the way through. So like, I've been improving, improving, improving. And you can see that in my fights. Every time I come back on a fight, I always look better, you know, because I'm I'm always working to improve. I got I'm I'm still young. I don't get injured um as much touch wood, um, and I'm just in the gym every single day working to get better, you know. So Come August, we're totally different, different fire. Last time we spoke was when the Masvidal fight was announced. When you found out that he uh, withdrew, what did you think? I thought you little pussy. I don't know who'd have done it anyway. I, I, I like a feeling would have done it. You know, it's, I don't think he wants to fight. You know, and I, I've always said that he does want to fight me. You know, and lastly, I would have loved for that fight to happen. What I wouldn't about? I was saying the other day, and I wouldn't about. I'll give him the title shot. You know, like that'd be a. Uh, a fantastic fight in the UK. Bring it back to the O2 where it happened. Oh and, my god! Uh, um, for the for the for the towel. You know that, that that's what I want to do next after oh. this. Wow, what a scene that would be, right? Back at the scene uh, of the man, crime. Imagine. You versus I don't know if <laughs> they could. Can they justify giving it to him after the recent losses? Yeah, I, 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 you I, don't I, care. I offer it to him. <laughs> I, can, I, can, I offer it to him. If it happens in the UK, for sure. Would that be the dream scenario for you? Obviously, you win, but the first title, yeah, yeah him. Yeah, well, yeah, well, when I win, my like I said, my dream scenario would be to bring him back to London and to headline London. I never got an opportunity to headline London, no. Um, first I meant to do it on Woodley, then that got cancelled because of COVID, and so I always want to come back to home and, and do it. So, yeah. Um, when when you heard Usman start talking about uh, Canelo and all this stuff, what were you thinking? That boy, that boy's lost. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> like, he's, he's really believing in his box. He's just fair play to him. He has improved, you know. He's, he's, He's learned um, a bit more in his feet, and yeah, he has improved, you know. But far as that Canelo talk, he needs to calm down, you know. He's not. I don't think he. If he is what he think he is, you know, like far as that striking was, 
he was he fought, you know. Mustard out, he's probably the best striker out of three. My own Colby, Mustard out and Burns. And he's just a, a scrappy, a scrappy striker, you know. And um, so yeah, I think he's he's getting way ahead of himself. Do you think he genuinely believes that he could beat Canelo or it's just the payday? I think so. I think, listen, like, we're not, <laughs> you know, when, you, when you're young, you just get into striking. You start knocking everyone out. He's doing, like, sick in the gym and you're landing good shots and that. You're thinking, yo, I can, I can take on anyone, <laughs> you know? So I think he actually believes that he can do it, you know? Like, it's like a, when I'm walking to the gym and they start having success in the gym and they're going into fights having success, like, getting finishes. They actually think that they, they can be the best in the world when it comes to just boxing or striking, you know? Right. So I think he actually believes it. Do you think he could hang with Canelo? Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> How? <laughs> it's too slow. It's too slow and flat-footed. You can't, you can't. I kind of one of my favorite boxers as well, you know? So, nah, I can't, I can't see how he would, you know? When I think actually a lot of fans don't remember that you guys fought each other so many years ago, seven years ago almost now. Yeah. When's the last time you watched that fight? Seven years ago. <laughs> really? You haven't watched it yeah. even now in the buildup. You don't. You don't uh, fire it back up. I don't. I, I, I never really watch fights. You know? I watch it like once or twice in camp, and that, that's it. I don't really watch much because I'm. I'm. I was watching it. Like my friend messaged me today. That I went. Who was the training with when you first fought? Um, Usman, and I was like, I told him my team, and he's like, oh, man, you look like totally different from what, what you look now, you know, even like physically, my body has changed and everything, you know, so, um, no, nah, I don't know, really, I've, I've seen it a few times enough to know what happened and what not, what's not going to happen again, and that's it. Uh, what about him? Like, would you, do you think it's fair to say that he has improved a lot since that fight as well? Yeah, yeah, and like I said, he's improved his, his, um, his strike, his boxing, you know, I think now he's understanding um, he's still basic in what he does, but he un- he understands what he's doing as far as the striking goes. And when we first fought, it was a, a striker versus wrestler match. You know, it wasn't. Now it's going to be a totally different fight. Now it's the mixed martial arts versus the rest- a wrestler boxer. You know, so it's it's, it's it's a totally different fight from what it was back then. What what are the uh, recent people who he beat doing wrong against him? In your opinion, Colby, uh, Jorge, what are they doing wrong against Gilbert? Um, it's hard, it's hard to say, you know. I, I think the perfect start to be Usman. He put them all through together. I think they beat him, uh-huh. you know. <laughs> I think I think Master all got is good at what he does. Kobe is good at what he does, and Burns is good at what he does, you know. But imagine you merge all them three together. Mm. They beat him, you know, because they always have success with him. Burns dropped him. Rocked Kobe him. Did, did good work. Rocked him. Yeah. yeah. Did, did good work. Um, Kobe did good work on him. So. Is they, they are success in what they did, you know. But also, I'm two different far, I'm far, some all three of them in, mm. in in where I, I approach it and uh, my my knowledge of striking, my knowledge of um the wrestling that you see right now, and you just I'm just two different different persons from all three of them. Uh, obviously, he's a tremendous wrestler. Are you bringing anyone new to mimic him, mimic his style, his wrestling, anything like that, or is it the same squad? Um. It'd be the same squad, probably um few training partners, sparring partners. Not I won't bring the wrestlers in or nothing like that. This is not this won't be a wrestling match, you know. It'd be an MMA match. Right. You know, and like when when I first fought him, Aero, I, I didn't understand like I did wrestling just to do wrestling. I did not enjoy wrestling, mm. you know, and like over the last seven, seven, eight years, I've like put myself in them positions where now I'm actually enjoying wrestling, you know. Wow. Like sometimes I mean, I mean, I mean, doing wrestling more than more than striking sometimes, you know. And so, I've actually I now can now I'm actually like teaching wrestling in my in my gym and everything. Cause now I understand it. I understand the positions. I understand everything, you know. But back 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 then when I thought when my coach was telling me what to do, I was kind of just doing it just to do it. I didn't understand why I was doing it, you know. But now I I understand perfectly um, what I'm doing, you know. And I, I've always said I don't need to be the best. Um, wrestler in the world to be Usman has got to be the better, better wrestler for what he does good mm. that's it and and who got you to like it and understand it and appreciate it um my coaches you know uh, my, my wrestling coach can be he, he helped, helped me a lot and just over time just you just kind of grow you know you gotta, I started my man when I was 17 years old when I fought Usman I was probably I was 23 I think when I fought Usman I can't remember what, what I was so I, I wasn't doing it long Mm. You know, so I, I'm only, I was only having success with striking. 
when, when I won the Bama title and everything, then I got to the UFC and I was unsuccessful striking. I thought I don't need to improve wrestling because I'm having success with striking. But once I lost the husband, I thought, nah, I need to actually put myself in positions where I need to learn, you know, and that's what I've been doing a lot over the last eight years. Uh, you just said prior to that, uh, you just have to do, as far as the wrestling is concerned, like beat him at what he's good at. What is he, like, what makes him so good in your opinion? And, you know. <laughs> I can't tell you that. You okay, see, all right. Come, all right. <laughs> like, well, just, but everyone got a system in how they fight. Yeah. You know, and I'll, like, it's hard to say without saying, but everyone got like a system that, in how it. they fight. And mm -hmm. he's got a system now he fights, and that's oh. it. Wow, that is really interesting. Uh, the fact that he's coming off a hand injury, that maybe he's feeling himself, you know, he's got the fancy clothes, the Canelo. Do you feel like this, he's he's ripe for the taking right now? Do you, do you feel like the, the stars are aligning perfectly for you? Um, I don't really pay too much attention into that. I'm, I, want, I want him to, at his best. I don't want an excuse when I beat him. You know, I'm not, I'm like, I'm not making an excuse. He, he was the best guy when, when we were for, you know, he was better than me in wrestling than what he did, you know, and that was it. I got no excuse. So when I beat him, there will, there will be no excuse. Mm. No hands or no no Canelo or nothing. Do you think he respects you? I believe so. I believe so, hundred percent. From what I've what what is didn't say the interviews, you know, but I, I believe so. Do Do you think he rates you as high as a Colby or Jorge? Things like Do you think he fears you? Do you think he understands how good you have been and and what you bring to the table? Um, I believe so, but. Like I said, he, he gives, he gives shit, you, you know? don't care. <laughs> I don't care. Errol, I am winning this fight 100%. I, I truly believe that in my heart, Savartan. I am winning. Now, I've seen, there's been enough time now where there's like footage on him doing what he does. And I am a good reader of fights, you know, and I know exactly what he does, what, what exactly how he fights. And I just know, you know, and now, now we'll see. You're supremely confident. 100% confident I'll be a world champion come August. Wow. We're going to play this on August 22nd on the Monday after the fight and be like, oh, he said this. He said it all. He he predicted all of this. Good man. I love it. Uh, by the Good way, um, Arnold Allen has told us that he drives like two, three hours to go train with you and your team. Uh, but he likes to stop off on the side of the road and take showers at truck stops. <laughs> What's up with this guy? Yeah. I mean, is this one of the weirdest guys you've ever know. trained with? What's happening over there? <laughs> <laughs> He's a mad guy, you know? I said it today, like, man, you drive free... Like you drive three hours to come to Birmingham to train. Then three hours back, that's six hours out your day done, you know? So you might just come down for the week. Yes. Like, do the week and then go back up. But it's like, every day he's like, oh, they're, they're, they're like, mate, you're mad. But yeah, <laughs> he's mad. But he's a, he's a great, great athlete and he, he, he's good. He's very good in what, in what he does and he's sick in the gym. To yeah. Have in the gym. He speaks very highly of you and the team. I just can't believe that he does that. And then on top of that... Yeah takes a shower at the truck stop. Now, did they install showers at the gym? Because he told me the problem was there were no showers at the gym. Yeah, no, there's still no showers. What's wrong? What's this, going this on? Uh, mate, they said they're doing it. I'm like, mate, if you want money, I give you some money to put a shower. Yes. Like, do the showers and all, but even for me, it's like still like a 45 minute drive to the gym for me. You no, know? oh. so I got to like drive to the gym, then come leave, get, get my car sweaty, and drive back and get showered at home, you know, which is long, because it just breaks the day up too much. You know, you can just get from one gym to another gym or go where you're going, but um, yeah, they, they said they're getting it done. So I reckon by, hopefully by end of this camp, we've got, we got a shower facility. And what about the UK scene right now? I mean, it's never been better, right? Would you agree with that? With Aspinall and Arnold yeah. yourself, you got young guys like Mohaya, Patty's on the scene, Meatball. It's never been like this, correct? Nah, never, never. And for even the talent-wise and like what they're doing, you know, they're beating great gyms and great, um, from different, different places. And I was the UK, MMA has grown so much. I, I am proud to be the front, the front runner of it, you know. And like I said, I think for me, Tom, uh, I like the way Tom fights, you know. He's for heavyweight. He moves, he moves like a light, like a featherweight, you know. He's on his toes, he's sharp with his, with his boxing and jiu-jitsu. So um, we've got some great, great, great fighters coming out of the UK. And I cannot wait to come back, bring the belt back, add more motivation to the guys to see that, look, we can do it from the UK. Mm. You know, I've been saying it for years. Like, I'm going to achieve the belt from the UK. You know, I know when I, was, when I first started off, there's like, oh, nah, you need to go to America, you need to go there, you can't, you won't, you won't be able to get to the top 10 if, if in the UK. No, I'm fine for the belt, like what you're talking about. So right. I'm, I'm going I'm to achieve it and hopefully that adds more motivation to the guys in the UK to look, we can achieve it for me. Do you have a theory as to why it's doing so well now? Why the scene is so hot? Um, I don't know, probably, I don't know. I think all like the, the great fires like, 
is now coaches, you know, like mm. Dan Hardys and mm. they're all like Brad Pickett, all are passing down the knowledge from what mm. they went and got from America. And then I add it into the in, into the gym, probably that that might have played a part in it, you know. And I don't know if I mean, it was just growing in general in, in the UK. Uh, Even two, like the fans in the Right. You know? No, no, for sure. It maybe just took a little more time for it to develop. Um, two last yeah, things. Yeah, 100%. Did you ever lose hope that this day would ever come? Did you ever start to feel that, you know what, maybe this is just never going to happen? Did that ever happen to you? Nah. I always knew I was going to fight for the world title. You just were, as far as at the time, it was probably at the time, like when, you know, but I always knew that I would fight for the world title when, it, when, it, when, it, when the opportunity comes it's just the win, you know. That's that was, that was the only annoying thing to think. Oh fuck's sake! Like, doing everything right. What? Well, what? Like, what should I have, have, have opportunity? You know, we got Kobe having two times at the, at the shot, mastered out twice at the shot. It's like they didn't earn nothing, you know. And now I'm here, they're racking up the wins. I got like, the second most wins in the division to the champion, obviously. And so, um, yeah, probably at the time frame, but not I always knew that. Like, obviously, me go and they keep winning. I uh, fought for it all. How do you see it playing out in your like the the? Is there a method of uh, of 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 victory? Do you do you, do you um, foresee something in your mind? Uh, it, it changes every day, huh? Mm. Um, in, in, how I see it playing out, it, it changes every day, and it's, of course, the early in camp as well. We still got ten weeks, yeah. You know, like talk to me like three weeks. We got three weeks left, two weeks left. I know exactly what's going to happen, you know, and how it's going to play out, and how I'm going to attack it, you know. Wow. Um. And and then you you said you, you win on August twentieth in uh, exotic Utah, and then first title defenses against Hawaii. They might <laughs> they might go back to Usman. They might say you know you've been champ for so long. We'll give you a crack immediate rematch. Yeah, I, yeah, I believe that's gonna happen as well. Yeah, but yeah. I love to, I love to have the master of fight. I think that'd be yeah like, a great pay per view and a great backstory to it. You know, but I think that's gonna happen. I'll, I'll beat him in August, and then we're, probably, we're gonna rematch in like. End of the year, you know, like December-ish, and that's I think what's going to happen. By the way, did you see uh, Masvidal Colby on the streets? I guess uh, that you know. Yeah, yeah, I seen it. That that boy's a little rat. Even though Colby shouldn't have snitched, but Masvidal's just a little rat to even like. He's like a sneaky like run up behind you, throw a shot, then like ducks off. You know, he's like he's just a weirdo. <laughs> but I, 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 a, a weird, weird you got man. a lot of street cred for that on. Uh, you know when it happened because they were like, well, you know, Leon never. You could have, you could have pressed charges, right? If you wanted to, they asked you, did they not? Yeah, well, I can't have. <laughs> I fucking press charges. I wanted to kill him. Press charges. They can't press charges for if I'm trying to kill somebody. Right, but Colby's uh, press. There's, Colby there's pressed charges. charges. Yeah, but yeah, but Colby's a, Colby's a rat, so he, he does what he wants to do. You know, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, we're from two different environments and from two different mentalities. Respect, Leon. I'm so happy for you. Really, really happy for Thank you. Thank you. The UK scene, very happy for you. It's going to be quite the scene. Uh, they'll have to stay up a little late to watch it because it's obviously happening here in America. It was crazy when I heard that they were going to maybe do it in London, but I know you don't care. Uh, August 20th, UFC 278. Would be nice if they put maybe a... Do you, you, you don't get pay-per-view for this one, right? You'll get it if you become champion, uh, correct? No, next one. Next one, yeah, all right, next fine. One, yeah. Maybe Nate, I was saying, maybe Nate on the card, but uh, we don't care about that. Uh, that'd, we, be, that'd, that'd be a good fight. Yeah. Nate, Nate. Nah, I don't care, but that'd be a good fight. Yeah, I like yeah. Nate. Nate's a good guy, you know? You guys are he buds now. Mad, but I like, I, not we're not buds, but I like him. You know, <laughs> he's easy, 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 you know? That's what I like about him. He never switches or wavered in the last, like, however long he's been in the UFC. He's always been Nate, you know, and... You have to respect that. Who would have thought you'd get a fight before he gets a fight? The guy can't get a fight, for God's sakes. Crazy, since your last I fight. Know, he's, well, I, don't, I don't know what's going on. It's like his, his last fight on his contract now. Yes. So I, I don't understand what's what, what, what's They're trying what's to ice him, Leon. They're everyone out. They're trying to ice him. I, I hear it. I hear, it's I hear a dirty it. game, they want, they want Leon. To go room. <laughs> it's a dirty game. It's a dirty we're game, a dirty my game, friend. But, and by the way, well, uh, shout it. out to your brother, Fabian. Big win for him recently against the uh, the legend. Aaron, it's in the finish. Crazy. It's in the finish. Jeez, uh, Louise, uh, brutal. Lovely. Does he have his next the fight yet? The elbows. Um, he's fighting um October. I, can't, I don't know the opponent. Oh, on the Dublin card. The Dublin card. No, no, not Dublin. Milan. Milan. There's oh, wow. Card, uh, Italy. So um, yeah, but yeah, the finish was 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 brilliant. You know, I mean, it's one of them fighters where he, need, he needed to win because he was coming off two losses. You know, um, so. It, it was it was spectacular. He's got to have a, a, a big play. name, right? After Lyoto, he's got to have someone big, right? Yeah, for sure. If it was me, though, if if if, if, I, if I'm him, I'm saying to him, like, get like 
two good names, like top 15 guys. Yeah. You know, and just to get the momentum back and then go to a title shot. You know, because right. Bellator is like a weird, it's like a mad organization. <laughs> like one minute you find like, one minute you find Leo Tomachida. Yeah. Next minute you find like some guy just coming, some no, coming no, from no, the man. corner shop. It's like, yeah. <laughs> there's no like system. There's no system, <laughs> there's no system to it. You know, it's like a weird promotion. It is but a little. They, it, they, it, they do fantastic. They do. They, they do, do fantastic in the UK. And they do. It's good for the UK. Yeah, they do. They, they, they do good in the UK, man. And it's um, it's good for that UK fighters and what they're doing in Bellator. Last thing, are you going to go to the card uh, July twenty third? Just to take um, yeah, in the atmosphere. Yeah, yeah. yeah for sure, hundred um, percent. I got media anyway on the Friday and the Saturday, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go down. One of my teammates, Jai, um, Jai Herbert, Herbert he's yeah. fine as well. On the card. Yeah, he's got he got match um this week, so he'll be fine on the card as well. They're going to give you a lot of love, a lot of motivation, and then you uh, you go to Utah the the following month, five days before your birthday. Uh, good luck to you, my friend. Very, very happy for you. you. Can't wait for it. Thank you for doing this. I appreciate good, it. Good, man. Thank you. Thank you for all, all being my corner of armor. You never, you never wavered over the years. To be fair, you know what I mean? You always like... Get hey, the don't forget. Shot, so don't it. forget when you pull it off on August 20th. Don't forget about us on that Monday, all right? Nah, I'm back, I'm back on the Monday. All I'm right. back on the Monday. <laughs> You're the man, <laughs> Leon. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. All the best to you. Thank you, bro. There he Thank is, you. Leon Rocky Edwards. August 20th. We told you... You know, sometimes they get it right. Sometimes they get it right. And they got it right. They got it right. It got a little dicey there. He was supposed to fight Darren Woodley. And then there was the COVID. And then there was this. And then there was that. And then there was this. And there was that. But Leon Edwards, finally. Now, does he pull it off? By the way, I wanted to look. Oh, I had it. Go to best fight odds. Okay, there's only one lineup at the moment, and it's uh, minus 290 for Usman, plus 235 for Edwards. That's the line. Uh, I don't see anything else, but uh, 170. Interesting weight class. He gets it at the right time when he needed it. A lot of people coming up. Hamzat's in the mix. You got Poirier talking about 170. You got... Uh, Connor coming back. You got this guy. You got that guy. You got all kinds of names. Bilal. Sean Brady on the come up. Shavkat. Michelle Pajera. But they got it right. Leon Edwards. I love what he said about Utah. By the way, I love Utah. Fantastic place. I don't know if I've ever been to Utah. I mean, it seems like a nice place. Have I been? I've been to Salt Lake City Airport. I don't think I've actually been to Utah, like in the actual town of Salt Lake City or any other. I can't. Can you name? Here's a here's a trivia for you, Frank. Can you name two cities in Utah? Utah. Utah's I mean, a city. Salt Lake City. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> can you name a second? I feel like I should be able to name a second. There's one that begins with the C, right? No, no I can't. Pro Provo. Is there? Yeah, Pro that works. Is there Provo, Utah? Nah, I'm just agreeing with you. Provo. Can you name a second? Yeah, Provo. Wow. There How the go. hell did There's I pull two. that? Wow. Can I'm actually shocked. Point? Provo, Utah. Is it Culver City? Is that? That's not oh, here. this is where Brigham Young is. Culver City. No, that's in California. Yeah, there you go. Close enough. How many can you name, New York, Rick? How many cities in Utah can you name? Guillermo, put it on the poll. How many cities in Utah can you name? Oh, here he comes. I like how it's like it's a, it's a big announcement when you arrive. <laughs> what do you like mean? It's like your barrel. I can hear the mic open. I can hear it like being, it's like you're you're the Kool-Aid man coming through the wall. Um, yes. How many cities in Utah can you name right now at the top of your head? Not many, although I have been. You have? Yes. For what? It's an Invicta event there. Wow. Um, Biggest city in Utah right now. Provo was the one I also would have known. Salt Lake City and Provo. Second biggest city in Utah, West Valley City. Third biggest, West Jordan. Fourth, Provo, Orem, St. George, Sandy. I've heard of Ogden. There you go. South Jordan, Sandy. Lehi, Lehi. Is uh, Moab in Utah? How do you spell that? M-O-A-B. 
No, but there's a Syracuse, weirdly enough. That's weird. Yeah. Um, they've only hosted one UFC event way back in the day. It was Yair Rodriguez against Alex Caceres. Fight night. Now they're getting a pay-per-view. Shaheen asked me how I got Provo. I don't know how I got Provo, other than BYU, probably. But that's also, I, that's the one I would have had as well. So that's right, so Moab is in Utah, just saying. Moab? Moab. Moab? It looks like the uh, Roadrunner. Oh, Moab. Yeah. You know how many people live there? I don't think any. No, 5,000. people that did adventure biking there. 5,480. That's a lot of people. Yeah, it's a lot. <laughs> well, uh, they're getting a, uh, a UFC event. Not only a UFC event, they're getting a UFC pay-per-view. Now I th- I I had heard that the uh, the owners of the Jazz, who I think own the arena, were really pushing for it. Who knows how they decide where they're going? The UFC could go anywhere right now and sell out. Uh, obviously, the Singapore deal was like the Abu Dhabi deal, where it's a it's a tourism play. That's why there were so many commercials about Singapore and all that stuff. Um, and maybe Utah is looking for the same type of tourism play. Who knows? Now speaking of this past weekend. And thank you very much to uh, Mr. Leon. L- let's see how Mr. GC did. We will get to his uh, betting recap in a moment. But first, NBA Finals. No game last night. A little bit annoying. Back tonight, tie 2-2. Crypto Joe very nervous. His Boston Celtics, they were up 2-1. It looked like they were en route to maybe shocking the world. Shades of the 2019 Toronto Raptors three years ago today pulling off the big game six win over Golden State. We'll see what happens tonight in the Bay, San Francisco, 9 p.m. Eastern. Can't wait. NBA Finals on DraftKings Sportsbook, the official sports unofficial, excuse me, sports betting partner of the NBA. New customers can make any $5 NBA bet and get $150 in free bets instantly. Looking to turn another small bet into a big payday during the NBA Finals with DraftKings Same Game Parlay. You can do just that. The NBA season, as you know, is reaching its conclusion. And this NBA season, there was a customer who placed $5, same game parlay, and won over $5,000. How about that? Create your own parlay by combining multiple bets like which team will win, total threes made, total rebounds, and more. Boom shakalaka. You have a shot at an even bigger payout. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use promo code DMR. Make any $5 bet during the NBA Finals and get $150 in free bets instantly. That's promo code DMAR only at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the National Basketball Association. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. See show notes for details. Uh, all right. So GC is where? Where in the world is GC? I believe he's in Italy right now based on his uh, Instagram, but he did wake up on Saturday. He was in the mix. He said he was going to. We all had our doubts. We have any Italian music to play, Frank? No. A little disappointing. We had the French music. You have something against the Italians. Oh, yeah, this is like a club in Milan. (laughs) Have you ever been to Italy? No, I haven't. Mm. Uh, Beautiful, beautiful country. I've been to Milan. I've been to Venice. Uh, I've been, where else have I been? Rome, um, Cinque Terre. I mean, I've been, I mean, some might say I'm one of the biggest deals in in Italy. Some would. Some would. Actually, I have family in Milan, believe it or not. Anyway, so he said he was going to wake up. We all had our doubts. And there he was, tweeting a storm. Now he could have, now that I think about it, he could have uh, scheduled those tweets, but they were pretty specific. So I don't know if he could have done that. Uh, in any event, I believe him and uh, want to know how he did. And so without further ado, let us roll through the picks here. Now, believe it or not, I have to go to Jedi's Twitter account to get the picks to remind myself. Uh, he, wait, One second. Give me a moment. Everyone just calm down. Could we get a drum roll or something? Do we have anything like that? Did you take my uh, mic down because I was typing? Is that what just happened? Yep. Wow. You don't like the typing? Does it no, get on your nerves? No, honestly, that was just... Um, that was a mistake, Ariel. Thank okay. you for <laughs> just pointing that out. Uh, all right. So he picked... Uh, we'll get to the result, the big finish in a moment. He picked Sungwoo Choi, who lost via split decision. Uh, he picked Jack Della Madalena, who's going to be on Wednesday's show, by the way, who had a massive win over Ramzam, Ramzan Amiv, 
Juan via TK on the first. So he got that right. He picked Ioani on Jacek. Unfortunately, she did not win. And he had a lot riding on that one. The future bet of her being champion by the end of the year probably ain't going to happen now. Got that wrong. He picked Yuri Prochaska. So shout out to that. Got that one right. He also picked Yuri Prochaska, Glover Teixeira under two and a half. Didn't get that right. Obviously, it went almost five. Then he had a parlay of Zhang Yanjacek, one and a half, and he lost out on that one. What was it? Uh, it ended at 228. He said something about it not like being two seconds off, so I guess it should be two and a half. Who the hell knows? Valentina Shevchenko, money line, got that right. Prochaska and Teixeira fight doesn't go the distance. Got that right, but it doesn't matter. That's how parlays work. So in the end, results are... Do we have his uh, recap there? Here it is. Singles, three for three. Parlays, 0 for 1. So minus 1.2 units in the single department he lost. 2.26 minus in the uh, parlay department. Uh, the total is still very impressive, plus 35.72 units. Now, I see a lot of people giving, you know, this is the type of guy that I am. I'm a foxhole kind of guy. I see some jabrones coming at GC and being like, where are these odds coming from? He has said it. To, don't, don't be an idiot and just jump on Twitter and think that people work on Twitter. No, we do shows here, and we talk about on this show and his other podcast with uh, Jed Mashu, No Bets Barred. He has said this time and again, he grabs these when they come out, and he more often than not will tell you when he grabs them. So don't just look at the finished product and say, oh, where's this line coming from? Are you making, like, come on. No one's making up lines here, you dorks. Enough already. I just had to get that off my chest. Um, he actually gave us a little breakdown, Yurk, Rick, and I, a little breakdown of what happened. So this is his, uh, his thoughts. This is what he wrote. Another rough week. I think that's two in a row where he's uh, on the losing end. All good. Yoana Zhang finishing two seconds short of the over one and a half gives us another uh, losing week. So that was the one. But wait a second. New York Rick, can you explain this to me? If the fight ended... Oh, because second round... Oh, I'm such a dumbass. Yes, 228 would be over one and a half. Yeah. Wow, I'm really dumb. No comment. Yes. Uh, real life pain watching that happen parlay dead you want to play dead you want a future dead <laughs> that's right there was a lot riding on that one. Oh my gosh uh, and also it was at 5 in the morning uh, he would have finished up 0.7 instead of down 3.46 wow what a swing uh, Jack Della is the man agreed what a performance by Jake Matthews yes Jake Matthews it feels like Jake Matthews been in the UFC now for 14 years and yet he's still 27 years old I don't know how this is possible but it's incredible OMG that main event I wish I was there to chop it up about it I think he means here and not in Singapore uh, he's down 3.46 he mentioned that already just bleeding units over here in Euro up 23.66 on the year 35.77 all time. So it's crazy. I mean, that's quite the run. Again, you have people being, ew, post the sips. Ew, where did this line come from? Ew, I take this very seriously. Ew, I'm just going to go on Twitter and talk shit about everyone and just be angry, jealous, and just overall a downer to be around. Ew. <laughs> Uh, also, he added some big hitters, and they're pretty crazy. People just keep sending him stuff. Here's one. Mark Rannigan had Yuri by rear naked choke submission at plus, get this, 15000 Plus 15000 $5 to win, seven fifty. Also hit a plus 2989 two-week nine-leg parlay and ends up profiting Almost 4,000 on the weekend, all because of the Yuri choke. Could you imagine that? All because of the Yuri choke. By the way, Yuri, is it true that Yuri via RNC 
in the uh, in the fifth round was something like plus twenty thousand. Where <laughs> do you guys, are? You guys, I'm I'm picturing you guys laughing in the back. Do you guys like the voice or do you not like the voice? I just turned to Joe and I was like, "How long do you think he's going to do the voice?" And Joe was like, "I think it's here to stay." Oh, it's here to stay, baby. Oh, it's here to stay. Uh, how about Kyle Grant? Kyle Grant is not a big better at all. Claims his baby turned his twenty dollar bet into a two hundred dollar bet, and it was Zhang. Ioana starts round one. Valentina, Geary, Glover fight doesn't go the distance, so it won, but he had to sweat it every step of the way. Now, who's his baby? Oh, there's the baby. <laughs> That's amazing. I was looking at the thing that he wrote, and then I look up, and there's a guy sitting there with a baby. I wasn't sure if the baby was like his girlfriend. Now, by the way, how did the baby... Yeah, sorry, someone could have told me. How did the baby turn the bet $20 into two? Like, what did the baby do? Press the phone. You think so? Yeah. You think the baby was playing and made this bet? No, he's making the bet with the baby on his lap. Yes. 2-0, then the baby hits the button and another zero happens. You think so? Yeah, like I'm literally, there's literally no other possible way this happens. Okay, let me read it again. Also, it's very obvious. Claims like, there's only baby, one oh. way it happens, and it's very obviously. Okay, so the baby turned the $20 bet into a $200 bet, meaning the baby touched the phone no, and no, added the, a zero. Yeah, what I just described, yeah. <laughs> the, the baby only literally possible said, way it could happen. why don't you turn that into 200 Dad? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so then what's this? And it was Zhang Yuana starts round one. Of course they're going to start round one. Uh, he must have meant starts round two. Oh, right. There it is. Starts round two. Come on, GC. Too much vino over there. Valentina and Yuri Glover fight doesn't go the distance. Wow. 28 seconds. Look at that baby. What a lovely baby. Anyway, uh, last one is Ollie Cheatham and Gaza Brew. These two, <laughs> this is, these are his words. These two sickos. Both took Yuri round five submission at 400 to one. Both bet $2 and return 800 insane stuff. There it is. How the hell, how does someone do Yuri via submission round five? How's that possible? There's Glover's, certain, there are certain books that'll take. No, no, I know that. But what propels you to do that? Uh, they're not showing the time hundred other oh, yeah. different variations of this that they had that makes this probably like a break even or no probably not a break even just because this one's so out there and they probably made enough but they had 10 to 15 other bets on yuri by round three K. you think so random yeah there, no You're calling bs nobody no i'm not calling bs because they won the ticket clearly it'd be more impressive if this was their one bet on the main event not 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 happen no chance no chance you also don't put two dollars on your one bet. No, that's, if the baby that's got gonna happen. That's true. It's a good. Point. Yeah, but the, if the baby turns it from two to to two hundred, now all of a sudden this one's uh, crazier. And so that's. Can plus we just talk about like, what 000. did you think happened? Exactly? I don't know. I'm reading this. I'm like, it is not a big better. <laughs> and Ariel's yeah, mind, okay. the kid is like, I'm just, I'm just trying to figure out. I don't understand scenarios. I think he was talking about his wife. Like, oh, my baby. Oh, you know? yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> His main squeeze. I mean, if it's that case, then like she's, you know, she's a sharp. Well, I thought like she's like, baby, baby, you got to go with uh, Joanna yeah. or whatever. Yeah, this version of reality Listen, in your mind is. Um, I don't know. I'm foreign to all this stuff. I'm hoping that uh, that the baby did actually do that. You know what it's like? Baby, baby, the, the baby was like, <laughs> his voice. I mean, <laughs> daddy. Just. Yeah, and and be sure to post the slip. Wait, so now you're now you're putting the baby in the category of like these <laughs> these haters or whoever you're kind of aiming this at. The baby was innocent, and in fact, the baby helped this man make some money. Let's not go with the baby now. Post the slip. <laughs> <laughs> I will say this is this is very nice to see. What is nice to see? Your your defense of him. I like it. Of course. Wait, wait a second. I'm the most loyal guy in the biz. What are you talking about? We, we already did this last week. I don't want to do that. When did I do this? I am the most loyal person that anyone has ever met. You just threw me under the bus. Like, what are you talking about? Like, Why'd you drop my mic down? Like, oh, your that's loyalty not... goes wow. only so wow. far. It's already, it's already unraveling. There has never been a more loyal guy in the history of loyalty. Let How alone. How did you turn me saying it's nice to see this into like, wait a minute. That's annoying. 
I go on Twitter every time he he uh, he makes the picks. And let's be honest. I mean, big baby face in the business, GC, right now. He yeah. can do no wrong. The, uh, the mensch of all mensch is the baby face. Honestly, reminds me of like 2014 New York Rick. I mean, we're not there anymore. I'll tell you that. I wouldn't <laughs> get a defense like this. You throw me to you throw me to the wolves. Wow, really? I believe it. Mm. 2014 fit like UFC. No, fit? no, not 2014. That's when I was. That's when I was the baby face. Yeah, that's what I'm talking feel. about. I'm saying 2014 New York Rick could do no wrong. Yeah, UFC. Well, fit? It, that's right around the time. That's right around the time. The moment what? that shifted it all kind of happened. So what shifted it all? Oh, the, 2014. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> so maybe let's go to like 2012, 2013. No, no, no. That was 2016. Oh, okay. All you're right. You're so talking maybe. Ronda? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was All 2016. Right, so I had, I had like three years until it, until it. Uh, yeah, no, the, it, that definitely, there was a shift there. But even that, I mean, it was more of like a wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Now you're full blown heel. Listen, I mean. By the way. Throw me with the wolves. I'm going to start to eat. No, but by the way, you have to, like, there can't be two faces on the show, you know? No, I don't see you've turned this is this is you turned this into something it's not. I say, <laughs> great. It's good. It's good that you're out there supporting your dude. Yeah. And you're like, wait a minute, I, who don't I support? Like, yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's the that's the area tone. Yeah, well I get very defensive. No, I, I see him I see him post the the the, the pics and then people are like, hey, let me pick? tell you something that yeah, I, I hope ahead, GC please. knows as well. Please. Don't read it. I know. Uh, you know what? Can That's I be honest? Secret. People send it to me. That's the problem. <laughs> Alex Weber, the aforementioned. By the way, what about Dominic Reyes? Okay, so tell Alex Weber. Hey, Alex. Don't, don't send need it. it. Thanks. Yeah. Don't send it to me, bro. By the way, what about Alex also, Weber getting a shout out from Dominic Reyes? Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Did you see that? Making him aware of the Jays. Yeah. Um, what was your also? Yeah, GC is going to bounce back. It's like, we know this. The man's been giving out winners the entire he's on fire. There. Like, come on. He's on fire. It's it's a little, it's a stumble. It's nothing. He's, he's coming back with the winners. Don't I know it. Stumbles. They can happen in this biz. I'll, I'll say it. I, I, I went with Glover, you know, I, I said he was the h dot. It was very under the radar. I don't know if you caught it. It was very hush-hush. Wait, you made an official? I did. Where Look, did I, I would have come on here and patted myself on the back. I would have. Where did it, it happen? It was, it was on like the dark web. <laughs> You know what? It was very hush. I, I give you respect because you could have just no. not mentioned it because I didn't even know what happened. I did. I, I was even, about to talk about how gun shy you are that you can't even you I know, can't even give them out it. anymore. I will say this: I was leaning towards Joanna and Glover, but uh, by the end of the you know of the week before the fight, I was completely off the Joanna thing just because. Why? It was it was just one of those things where I felt like Father Time. Two, two, that, two, such a long layoff. The layoff. Also, I said the layoff was going to help her or hurt her, and in the yeah. end, I decided it was going to hurt her. Not only that, but she shifted into this mode where she talks about almost anything but fighting. Yeah. Every time she gets a microphone, and every time anybody interviews her, and this is after the fight, but it also was clear before the fight. Like, you know, this is not like a hindsight notice. You know, I am doing so many things, so many businesses. I, everything's been so great for me. Business is booming. And then UFC had to sort the contract, and then I'm back. It felt very like um, just a business decision. The, yeah. the not I'm not, and I'm not trying to cast aspersions or say that Joanna's like heart isn't in it. But at a certain point, she has so much more in her life that she's worried about and focused on and trying to accomplish. Um, that fighting becomes secondary. Where I feel like somebody like Zhang Weili, her sole focus right now is getting back the title. That's it. That is all she wants and all she's gonna do. So. That creeps in. That's not to say that I didn't think, uh, you know, as I mentioned to you last week, that's not to say that I didn't think Yuana had a possibility to win that fight. But there's just so much more going on in Yuana's life that, like, at a certain point, fighting is not the only thing. And you know what? She Her legacy is fully established. There is nothing for her left to do. Um, shout out to her amazing career. And she deserves to be happy and move on to these other things. And it seems like she is. This is why the careers of a GSP... And even more so than GSP, because he took the long layoff and came back for the one fight, a DC are so impressive. DC was at the top, top, top. He's now in his 40s, and he's fighting for the belt. I mean, like, I think his last 10 fights or something were for the belt, yeah. something like that. And obviously, he lost his last fight, but was hanging in there with uh, Stipe, got poked in the eye, all that stuff. It's so rare to end up on top. 
It's so rare to go out on top. It's so rare to go out on a title fight, on a title victory. Um, even Glo like Glover's thing is different because it's the ones who have tasted the success and then try to build themselves back up. More often than not, historically, it's incredibly hard to get back up there because you have a, some mm. you have someone like Zhang who had the success for just like a fleeting moment, then loses the belt. She is so hungry to get back in there. She still hasn't tasted what life is like as a champion. Joanna got that run. She got that fame. She got everything, and she wants to do so much. She's also older. It's really hard to put yourself back in those shoes. There's also something too like they've done that, right? Yeah, like, they did it. They've already done that. There does it. It's not as new. It's not. A, it's a different type of challenge. Um, but yeah, reminds uh, me of a famous line. I don't know if you've ever heard me talk about it. No. It's uh, there was this great boxer. Do it in marvelous. The voice. <laughs> Marvelous Marvin Hagler once said, Ew, <laughs> it's so hard <laughs> to wake up at 4 a.m. to pound the pavement. Ew. Actually, that's what makes this Misha Tate thing so impressive. Can I just say, though, this yeah. thing is like full Adam Sandler. Like, it's is it like really? straight. Yeah, like it really? is. It's just an Adam Sandler. No, Adam Sandler is like, yeah, but yeah, but like the, 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 the cadence of it, it's like. But he's not talking about the haters. No, no. I mean, he's he's just doing his Adam yeah. Sandler bit. Um, Sorry, well, I, I cut you off. What were you saying? No. Uh, By the way, did you see Hustle? I did. You did? I, did. I have not. So like I said. My wife has been away, so I've had like 10 minutes here. I can't get through a show without falling asleep. Yep. So I'm 30 minutes into Hustle because I've watched it in five different installments. Yep. I'm literally going 10 minutes, 10 minutes, whatever. Five minutes here. It is so good. God, I love it. Does it get better? Uh, oh, it gets way better. Really? Yeah. No, no spoilers, please. I, I don't think please. it peaks early. I think it gets better. Oh, it's so good. Uh, I like. I ultimately liked it. I, re I really liked it a lot. Um, There's, there seems like a butt coming here. No, it's just that you know what it is. It was very much like a, it was very clearly like a like an NBA vehicle, you know. Like it was very too much, much NBA. Like a little too much cameos from like the mm. top. Now, don't get me wrong. That's what people come for, and that's why it's going to ultimately be successful. But to be honest, the best moments and the best actors are in it are Wancho and uh, Anthony Edwards. And right? Anthony Edwards just killing. I haven't even gotten to Anthony Edwards. Dude, Anthony Edwards. Really. Like, How did I even find it? Like, I know Anthony's a great guy. He's got the personality. He's just hilarious, but, like, then they put him in it. And he's not even doing, like, comedy in this. Like, because that's how we know him, right? Anthony right. Edwards is, like, the funniest dude in the NBA. He's an incredible actor. He kills it. He absolutely smashes it. But everybody in, the, in it was great. Sandler's Good great. Good movie. Good, yeah. He plays the sure. role of the sort of, like, beaten down, disgruntled guy. Yep. Um, Life has, has taken a shot at, at right. the character. Also, also, I think LeBron's company... Produced yeah. it, so maybe that's why they got all of the. Uh, oh, I'm the sure that right? didn't hurt. You know, LeBron and the NBA are behind it. I'm sure it didn't hurt to. to well, get no, out. I think LeBron gets the NBA behind it. Yeah, I don't know if the NBA is behind it without LeBron. Unless, yeah, sure. There you go. Uh, one of the great, but very good, very good failures of my life because Adam Sandler is one of, if not my favorite actor, just because it meant like I remember when his comedy album came out. Frank, you remember the comedy album? Which one? Uh, I think the first the one. What the hell is wrong with me? I think is one of them. The one you remember the cantaloupe one? Yeah. Why don't you have the cantaloupe? Yeah, I guess. See how the, different yeah, are those voices? I know, I know, I know. They're pretty the same. Why don't you come out of the pool? <laughs> cantaloupe. They talk about some other stuff, but I've never seen Uncut Gems. Can you believe what? that? Yeah, I I've never seen, seen it either. You've never seen it, yeah. And then talk about a good movie. Yo, and then I'm listening to him on Bill Simmons' podcast. Yeah. Shout out to Bill, love Bill. And they're talking like, oh, they're talking Uncut Gems. And they're like, nah, we won't talk about the ending. We don't give a spoilers. Yeah, and then that. they're like, oh, it's been two years. Oh, we could talk. They did that? And then they talk. They said, what happened? Okay. I'm not going to say it. Well, you know what? Maybe you don't watch Uncut Gems anyway because. No, that looks like, amazing. Yeah, but it's very like frantic is the way I'd describe it. Like there's, you don't, like you can't breathe for two hours is basically how Uncut Gems is. But it seems like, it seems like it a, might give you a, a career little defining a role. Is, is Greatest Adam Sandler movie. I saw someone rank them recently. Who ranked them? Oh. And I was not in favor of the rankings. Mine is probably... Jeez, I don't even know. I mean, it's got to be between like Happy Gilmore and Billy Madison, right? Like those are probably the two top contenders. Someone did a, a graphic on Twitter and I didn't agree with it. I'd go Billy Madison, Wedding Singer, and then no, Happy come on, Gilmore. Stop it. Th these are my opinions. Is this a legit opinion, or is this you? Uh, I really to... like Wedding Singer. Wedding Singer was fantastic. 
you know what's my like one like that my like underrated but not you know not the top but but i still love 50 first dates i really like 50 first dates a great one um him and drew together fantastic um Wait. it's got to be billy madison or, or oh this i'm looking at a site called Hello, vulture man. what's vulture uh, a pop culture site they have click as number one come on okay that's a joke though click was good but i mean that's wait is that no that's like a parody I know. Uh, no, I'm oh. saying like the site is, that's a parody, right? No, that no, list. no. Number so two. what's number two? Uh, number two is Wedding Singer. This feels just like somebody's pulling your leg. Number Tracking three. Number two there, yeah. Number three actually uh, is an underrated one, which I love, Punch Drunk Love. Yeah, great movie. Great movie. All right, so Click. Number is four actually, is no? Billy Madison. Are we sure these are not like highest grossing or something? How no. How could Click be higher? I mean. Big Daddy number five. Also a great one that I feel like is some like I like Big Daddy more than Waterboy. Yeah. Yes, uh, me too. I can't agree with that. One. Really? Me I too. Like Waterboy Same. A lot. The Wick. Oh, the me Week too. of. I never saw the Week of. Never even heard of it. Have you seen it, Frank? No. Funny People. I think Funny I saw people. it. That's on the list. Yeah. That's on the list. Happy Gilmore number nine. Get out of here with that. That's too low. Fifty First Dates number ten. Yeah. What about a, um, a great Uncut Jet? A Uncut love. Gems twelve. What was the one with the undercover cop? Bulletproof. No. Wait, what? A, you... I, I just now remembered this Adam Sandler movie. But Bulletproof, that was the name of it, right? I didn't see that. Is that for real? It was from the 90s. Yeah, he was like his best friend. Ended Why did up being I feel like that was like a, a, like a hilarity uh, ensues? What's it called? Like a Bruce Willis vehicle or something like that. Maybe I'm thinking of a different movie. By the way, very underrated one, which uh, no one talks about, Eight Crazy Nights. I never saw it. What? That's never the animated one, right? So good. I mean, <laughs> glad Little Nicky's not on that list. Yeah, Little Nicky was bad. Wait, Eight Crazy Nights, way better than Uncut Gems, right? You've never even seen it. But it's like, you know. I, not on that list. Who knew Adam Sandler uh, rankings were so controversial? I'm looking at another one on Yahoo. Big I mean, Daddy number one they I have. I think it's also era specific, right? Like people who are newer to Sandler might be like, well, Big oh, Daddy yeah, is Uncut like Gems. 99. These are old, like, you know. They have Uncut at three. Billy, where's Billy Madison? Billy Madison's got to be like five shit now. Billy Madison has to be one. I thought that was like universally recognized. No? Or, or, or uh, Happy. Those are the two. Those are the two. Meyerowitz. The Meyerowitz stories. Looks great. Never heard of it. Have you heard? <laughs> that was it. I didn't mean to do Speaking that. Of old. Uh, sneaky, sneaky. Right? I didn't mean to do that. Oh, Airheads. You remember Airheads? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's, you know, one that that's like number five. That is, Really? Really Frank's like got it. a weirdo list. Rain over me. Not familiar with that man. What a career, dude! Dude's got a a banger, like a, a resume that that's just full of bangers. Good for him. Oh, hustles here, number thirteen. Oh, you remember anger management? I of mean, course. we could do this all day. How was click number one on that other list? Don't get it. Don't get it. Mr. Deeds. That's a classic. Yeah. Wow. Above. Very very sneaky, sir. Above uh, Waterboy. What's the greatest MMA movie of all time? Warrior, for sure. Uh, is there even anything that's like... Here comes the boom? No, we're not co including documentaries, right? Yeah, that's yeah. It's like a separate category. Yeah, no, it's it's definitely a warrior. That's like a legit good movie. Frank? The MMA is not even that great, but the but the movie... It's I would say Here Comes the Boom was better. Stop it. What are you talking about? Fight Club. You joke. I mean, well, haha, hilarious. By the way, Fight Club, does that count? I mean, why wouldn't no. it? That's on MMA. Street fighting? No, that's like street fighting. <laughs> like underground fight clubs. You don't think any street fighter has ever like... Oh, for sure. MMA. Okay, so but why doesn't it come? It doesn't out? feel like... I don't even know if... I don't even think the UFC was a thing. When did Fight Club come out? 98. Oh, yeah. Eight. It was the thing. 99? 99. Yeah. Greatest MMA movie. Yeah, I guess it has to be Warrior, right? It's a good movie. Legit good movie. Did you ever see the Friends episode I know, with... Uh, yeah, yeah. What's his name? Favreau. John Favreau. Uh... I know a lot of people are into um, Kingdom, the show, the series. Oh, yeah. I never people saw it. I've always said that was really good. I know they featured a lot of uh, MMA fighters on it. Uh, I never saw it either. Not a TV. You know what someone told me? Movies guy. Oh, wait. You haven't seen it? I have not seen it. But people have recommended Frank, it. Frank, have you seen it? I haven't. Hmm. Um, you know the actor, Jonathan Tucker? By the way, this website that I'm looking at has Red Belt as number one. Never Back Down 3 as number two. No, these Boyka, are these. Green Street 3. First of all, Here comes half the of these boom. are not even like MMA movies. The Philly Kid, Blood, what? Red They're, Belt, Red Belt, yes, but 
half of these are not. And, and just to movies. be clear, what are we constituting as an MMA movie? I don't know. It has to have a fight in an MMA. MMA cage, like a real. So, like MMA an organized fight. MMA. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Why? What did you think we were talking about? I was just curious what the uh, threshold was. Hmm. I mean, Smashing Machine number one, Doc. Yeah, but Doc. Yeah, yeah. Right. Um. Anyway, do you know Jonathan Tucker, the actor? The name sounds familiar. Yeah. He's in. Uh, oh, there was a movie called Fighting. I think. Wait. I've seen so that. Thunderdome. That's an MMA cage, or no? Hmm. <laughs> Ask me I'm going to say no. Are you talking okay. about Spider-Man? Wasn't no, that in the Mad film? Max. Mad Max. Which, what, what, which was the one with Macho Man as the bad guy? Yeah, that was a Spider-Man movie. But wasn't that a wrestling? That was wrestling. That was a steel cage wrestling match. Oh. Uh, this other one. <laughs> this is what the people come for. The, the, this other one has Warriors 1, Undisputed yeah, of course. 2 as to never back down. Yeah, there's been some bad. Like Bloodsport doesn't count. Here no, comes the boom. Why not? No, these, what about Over the Top? Mm. Oh, over the, the top? Honestly, that was incredible. A fight movie. That was incredible. Anyway, what I wanted to say was Jonathan Tucker <laughs> is an actor. Look him up. He's in Warrior. No, not Warrior. He's in that TV show you just Kingdom. mentioned. Kingdom. And when I was working for Fox, I kid you not, maybe someone out there can verify this. He came up to me when I was in the back. Mm -hmm. And he's like, Ari Hawani, big fan, man, blah, blah, yep. blah. And told me that there's a character on the show that was based on me. There's like a journalist guy. Nobody's ever like investigated this. I don't know. Maybe no one's seen it. But according no, to popular with MMA, fans. according to this guy, he said there all was right. a, one of those. Now stars. what we need is somebody who see, all the MMA fans who have seen Kingdom. Yes. Show us who the reporter guy is, and let's see if it's you know. So I don't know if he looks like me, but apparently he's like a slimy fellow. Not a slimy fellow, but uh, there's there's <laughs> is, it, is this a therapy session? Does no. it have like a disclaimer like it's based on? <laughs> He came to me, and then I was like, well, why didn't you just ask me? I would have done it. I've actually been asked to do a few movies in my day. I think, though, yeah. I mean, you could have done it. I was going to say I think they're trying to do, like, you know, fictional characters, but at the same time, you could just give you a different name and, and do it. Well, um, if they asked you, and you said no, and they decided to roll with it anyway, then you could. No, they never asked me. That's what I'm saying. They just didn't bother to ask you. There was another movie uh, that asked me to be, and I think Kenny was in it. Kenny Florian, maybe Stefan Bonner. Ooh. And I think they were filming it in Alabama, and I was like, man, what am I going to do? This was an MMA movie or just a... Yeah, they wanted me to do uh, some talk show. I think I think Christian was in it, too. Christian of uh, wrestling fame. John Moxley did, was in it also. Did this come out? No, no, yes, yes, John Moxley. John Moxley movie, MMA movie, Cage Fighter. There it is. What year did this come out? Oh, very recently. Uh, 2020. Okay. Gina Gershon. Uh, Josh Herdman, Chuck Liddell, Michelle Ryan, Georgia Bradner, and they asked me to be in it. never even hit my radar. Yeah. You're a big fan of this, right, Frank? Huge. 4.5 4. out of 10 on IMDb. I mean, it's better than a 1.7. What would that be? But I'm on. No? Um, all right. Well, I feel like there's an opening for a great MMA movie, but everyone does it there really really poorly I, i'll be honest i thought halle berry's attempt wasn't bad oh my god we didn't even mention that i thought it was pretty decent did you really see it yeah i really saw it wow it was it was not bad i did not see it i was salty about that i didn't like how they did cats and gano and cyborg dirty i mean it's a different it is good though it's not bad it's really not and valentina's like the main like, she's not in it a lot she's but she's the bad guy one fight but she is the main she is the champ she is the one she's trying to beat and who wins? Is that a spoiler? I'm not gonna spoil the movie. Is Invicta in it? Yeah. The like promotion in is Invicta. Wow. Is Shannon in it? Is Shannon in it? No. The promoter's a different the promoter's a man. Um hmm. that's weird. And wait, it's an all female promotion? It's a female promotion, but he is a man. Okay, well. Um and not no, Shannon's not in it. Uh Julie, I think, is Kedzie? in the commentary. Yeah. And Kedzie's on comms? Yeah, but it wasn't TJ. Who was the other commentator? That's why. Was it Eve Edwards? I forget. As the play-by-play? -play? Yeah, somebody else was in the commentary. Anyway. Anyway. Um, all right, before we go, prediction time. Who's Yuri's first title defense against? Man, this is very tough. It's so tough, right? I think it's all going to be timing, and it's all going to... 
it really, I mean, you tell me if you disagree with this. It's going to come down to can they make the fight in Eastern Europe and then it will, it will be Jan and they'll just do it. If not, it will be Glover, in my opinion. Wow. So Anthony doesn't get, if he wins, Anthony doesn't get it. I think they'd have to have, I mean, imagine the, the performance you'd have to have to sell people on that fight over running it back with Glover. If Anthony you'd gets ha- a big knockout, gets on the microphone. People just watched. And also, I think this is this is unfortunate timing. I think it's almost worse that it's happening right after. If this happened three months from now, people would, the shine on that fight would kind of have started to Which fade one are you talking away. about? The Glover and yeah, Yuri. Yeah. It would have started to fade away. It's so fresh right now. Anthony or, or yeah, Uncle I mean, Live is going to have to legit like decapitate the other dude to have Anthony him. Uncle Live is in a month and a half. That's like an eternity in MMA. Nah, not far enough to really lose the luster on this one. Right now, top of my head, I can't tell you who headlined the fight night before this weekend's pay-per-view. Top of my head, who headlined it? Yeah, that's not the point, though. You remember who? the best fight of the year. No, but honestly, who did headline it? Yeah, I don't know. But you remember... <laughs> that's crazy. You remember, you remember the fight of the year a month later. That's my point. Oh, my God. I can't remember. Wait, what was the question? Who headlined, who headlined the, last? the last main event? Someone's writing on Slack. Um, I'm not looking. No, no, Casey was saying, here comes the boom is better than Warrior. I mean, that's... I agree with that. I agree with that. You haven't even seen it. Yeah. No, no, I have seen Warrior. I have seen Warrior. Yes, I did. It was good. It was good. But here comes boom, way better. It's a better movie. That's for sure. Wait, who headlined the last... (laughs) Um, Hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, my God. I have no... That that was nine days ago. June. Wait. I'm blanking. I don't know. (laughs) June. It all runs together. <laughs> no, I don't know either. I'm not. I'm not playing. Game. Wait, June fourth. Who headlined June fourth? This is crazy. The, I mean, I mean, this it, tells you if they're June fourth. What were we doing? I guess I got to look it up because I, I, I have no idea. I have no idea either. Doesn't that say something? Yeah, there's too much, man. There Wait. really is. Okay. Oh, oh yeah. Volkov Rosenstrike. There you go. There it is. Wow. Who headlined before that? Come on. Man. <laughs> Home Fiera. It's been a great stretch. But did you forget? Did you forget Hamzad and Gilbert? No, of course not. No. So that's my point. Right. More time would have been good. Now it's happening too quick, I think. Um, yeah, but it, I mean, How do you not do? How do you not do Yuri and Jan if you can do it in that circumstance? You know, if you. I mean, to your point, I think Yuri versus Glover too in that same spot might might do as just as well. Yeah. Yeah, but Jan has his fan base. No, it's a tough one. It's it, a tough those one. two combined, it 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 could be very special. But like the logistics involved to say like we're gonna book this stadium, we're gonna do it. Find you know find the venue first. Um, Jan suggested in Poland. Find the venue, book it out for that many people. That's that's tough stuff to get. Aligned. Right now, you could just run back Glover and Yuri, and nobody would be mad about it. Yeah. Uh, shout out to our old friend, Corporate Jake, who was actually watching. Yeah. Texted me. No, he was not. He's he wasn't? Not. I text. I texted him about it. He's lying. He was not watching. You was really it? think he's watching? Come on. No, I was shocked. Well, I, actually, I texted it was, him about it. You did? Yeah. Ah, oh, that actually warmed my heart. No, sorry. Sorry. What'd you say? He gave him a shout out? Here, here will be the sign. If he talks about this, you'll know he was watching. Okay, yeah. If he doesn't, then we'll you know see. he wasn't. He texted me at 316 saying, I always listen with a kissing emoji. Yeah. Nothing? Okay. You gave him the heads up? I texted him. Gosh. I was actually like, wow, that actually means a lot to Here me. Here we go. This is the test. All right. If he says anything about this interaction, keep keep an eye on your phone. Should we sip? Like, should we keep the stream going until he responds? <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about this new camera angle here, Frank? Oh, yeah. This is big. You don't notice a difference? It's a game changer. No, you can actually see you can see the Fedor picture. It's trending on Twitter. Oh, is it? Wow. Yeah, hashtag okay. new angle. Wow. All right. I feel a lot better Here's about it. Here's a that. question for you. If you hadn't mentioned it, would anyone have realized? Would any single person have been like, wow, they changed it. I'll tell you, Jedi would have realized <laughs> for sure. He re- I mean, the guy's pulling up tweets from six years ago. Yeah, I don't think I so. asked him how he figures out that something like how he remembers. He says just his memory. Nah, BS. He goes to his Twitter account from that day. He goes to a year ago on the day. Says his way. memory. Everybody else does the anniversaries. I mean, this is not rocket science here. Why do you have to call BS? What? Expect the you, best of people. You're so easily <laughs> duped by this nonsense. I mean, come on. 
<laughs> he remembers it. Yeah. He, he, he sends out he three of them remember. a day. That's all. I mean, it's impressive. He goes back to that date on Twitter and then finds it. And that's not to say that he's doing anything that anybody else can't do or he's, you know, he's not good for him is my point. Okay. All right. All right. Um, we're out of time. It's a nice little neat, Thank God. you know. <laughs> <laughs> Ew, they go so long. Who has time to watch this? This, vo- <laughs> this voice has got to stay. This voice has got to stay. Uh, thank you very much, New York Rick. We will talk to you on Wednesday uh, via remote location. How's the uh, the microphone working out, Frank? Are we on that or has that been fixed, rectified? What do you think? It's all good to go. Everything's good to go? All right. Um, and perhaps we'll get another uh, live look at GC's European vacation. I heard he might send us another clip. Is that accurate? No one seems to know. No one will ever know. Uh, but we are out of time for now, so you can hit my music. Ew, you can hit my music. Ew, how's the slips, bro? He's right. Don't read the comments. You'll be a lot happier. It's not like we're afraid of anything. Someone's right. really sending you these comments to review them? No, some people are like, bro, did you see this? Did you see this? Do you see that? I'm like, you know what? No. There's a reason why I mute people. I'm not a big fan of blocking people. You know why? Because then you give them the satisfaction. Fair enough. Because then they they uh, they post that on the uh, on the timeline. Like, look what happened. But I do want to give a shout out to all the good, positive people in the chat. I see my good friend Melissa in the YouTube chat. Uh, I see Keith in the YouTube chat. I see... OC says he likes the... You know, let's let's try to... We're, we're going to change this YouTube chat. Oh, AL says, good show. I'm disliking the video because of the voice. Come on. Darius says, what's up? I'm going to write to them. Hello. We're going to change this YouTube chat. We've gone from don't read the comments to reading the YouTube chat. Live. Killershaw's in the YouTube chat. You see? All of a sudden, Paj, Adam, everyone. Shout out to everyone in the YouTube chat. Uh, shout out to our guests this week. Misha Tate, Dominic Reyes, Anthony Smith, Leon Edwards. Back on Wednesday, same time and place. Until then, I say peace. Peace.